Members. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, members. The Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 14 August 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside Australia. The red light to my left indicates the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains. It pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they have continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and continuous belt of parklands, which is recognised in the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Thank you, Acting CEO. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Members, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council meeting of Tuesday the 14th of August 2018. Thank you for your attendance. Members, I'll take you directly to item three, which is apologies and leave of absence, of which we have one, which is our Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Sandy Vershaw. Members, I'll take you directly on to confirmation of minutes from the previous council meeting held on the 24th of July 2018. Members, can I have a move? Moved by Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. No, de no debate, I presume, members. I put that before you to adopt. Those in favour? Those against? We will carry the minutes from the meeting held on the 24th of July 2018. Members, we have a public forum this evening, and I have approved this request. It was from Beverly Pfeiffer regarding parking in Tin Street and permits for residences. Mr Pfeiffer, please do join us. Um, the members will allow you a period of five minutes. Welcome and thank you. Good evening. My name is Beverly Pfeiffer and I live at 23 Tin Street, North Adelaide. Thank you for the opportunity to address this council. Tonight I am here to bring up the issue of residential parking permits in North Adelaide. I am aware that this topic of discussion has been deferred until the 28th of August. Unfortunately, I will not be in Adelaide, hence I feel very strongly to voice my concerns before you. I purchased this property almost 13 years ago. The property is a three bedroom dwelling, therefore more likely to require space for two cars. When purchased, I was permitted to park on the verge, not impinging or encroaching on any pedestrians or other cars parking. This was a major consideration when looking for a residence, as I required more than one car park. Had this not been the case, I would not have purchased the property. The previous owners did so from the 1970s and I also parked there up until the last three years when a fine was slapped on me. I have since paid many street parking fines. There are currently two adults residing at this property, both with cars. The other resident takes public transport to work, therefore leaving their car at home. 
My life now consists of shuffling two cars backwards and forwards every three hours in all kinds of weather. I am an elderly 75-year-old rate payer and find this challenging at my time of life, notwithstanding the fact that in the last 17 months, I've had two knee replacements and one hip. This was has me seriously thinking of selling, moving out of the district, even though I love it there. Me nearby Walkville, Burnside and Unley issue parking permits to residents. The only residents who receive permits from the Adelaide City Council are with properties built before 1976. I miss out by two years. I appreciate that rules need to be made. With the knowledge of this rule, a corner property opposite me built on their car space, enabling them to have permit par because of the age of the property. I suggest that a more equitable approach would be to take into consideration the number of bedrooms and occupancy of the properties. I welcome any comments from the group or questions. I appreciate your consideration in this matter and look forward to hearing the outcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Pfeiffer. Greatly appreciate it. Members, we have no applications for deputations and nor do we have any petitions for this evening's council meeting. So I will take you on directly to item seven on your agendas, which is matters associated with the Adelaide City Council Audit Committee. Can I first please invite the chair of the City of Adelaide Audit Committee, Mr. David Powell, to provide a verbal annual report. Mr. Powell, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm pleased to uh, present to you the presiding members report for the City of Adelaide Audit Committee for the year just ended 30th of June 2018. Uh, the committee was established back in December 2014 and during um, the 14 to 19 term comprised uh, members being uh, myself, Ross Haslam, Sean Two, the Lord Mayor, uh, Councillor Philip Martin, Councillor Megan Hender as proxy and David, uh, Councillor David Slamer as proxy as well. Uh, we met four times during the year and um, we dealt with a number of issues during the year, including our terms of reference for the establishment of the committee, a review of the whistleblowers and grievances policy. Um, we reviewed the internal controls and risk management statement, which, we, uh, which is included in the financial statements. Um, during that period, we reviewed the 2017 financial statements um, we um, reviewed the audit committee meeting schedule and our work plan and uh, we reviewed the financial reporting process and proposed timetable for the current year's financial statements that uh, will be presented to us uh, in the next few months. Uh, we also reviewed the scope and methodology of the external audit and how that would be undertaken and uh, any re implementation of recommendations that were proposed. We review the financial, the internal audit program, which is conducted by KPMG, and we reviewed four reports during the year, which included the Heritage Incentive Scheme, uh, Fuel Tax Credits, Emergency Management and Ground Funding Opportunities. There's also a continuous review of the risk management procedures of the Council, uh, and um, I know that they're reported regularly to yourselves. We also noted the cyber security risks of the 10 gigabit Adelaide project and discussed that in the meetings. Um, and we also noted the 2018-19 budget and revised long-term financial plan prepared for public consultation. We've also had several uh, presentations from management during the year, including a subsidiary charter update and uh, a review of the um, legislative compliance framework. We do consider some confidential matters um, during the year. There were 11 and uh, we where uh, uh, confidential orders were applied and I'm satisfied that they were used appropriately. Certainly like to express my appreciation to the members of the committee for their participation 
uh, and also to the management of staff of the, of the council for their assistance and clarifications when required. Happy to take any questions or, or comments. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Members, do you have any questions of the Chair of the Audit Committee? Mr Powell, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Members, I will need someone to move for that presentation to be adopted. Councillor Martin, you're moving. Seconded by Councillor Clearahan. Correct. Members, I'll put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Councillor Martin, are you looking to ask me a question? Or? No, I'm making an amendment to the recommendation as distinct from the presentation. Okay, we've got, I'm doing this in three parts, Councillor Martin. So the first part is simply to adopt the uh, verbal presentation, the annual verbal presentation given by the Chair. So I'll take you through the, the other matters now. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, welcome. Now, members, the next stage with regards to item seven on your papers, Councillor Malani. Yes, we did. Members, I'll put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? So we carry. We've carried the verbal presentation, the annual ver verbal presentation of the Chair of the Audit Committee. Thank you. So, members, the next step is uh, to note, which is report of the Adelaide City Council Audit Committee, which is the annual report, which is in your papers. And this is a report to note, so I need a mover. Councillor Maloney moving. Seconded by Councillor Aviad and hand up second. Councillor Maloney, do you wish to speak to it? No, Councillor Abiyad. Is that all right? Members, I look to you. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I'd like to uh, propose an amendment, if I may. You're proposing an amendment to a report to note. No, the, uh, the second matter in relation to the recommendation, the first one is notes and second is rescinds. Uh, I'm going to deal with that separately, Councillor. So I'm doing that as a separate motion. Okay. Yes. So. So we'll deal with this report to note first, shall we, members? So any questions, members, about this report to note? There are? Summed up. Summed up. Thank you, Councillor Milani. I put this matter before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. So, members, the second part is the recommendation one with regards to whistleblowers policy and operating guidelines. The first part is that we have a motion. I look to a motion to rescind. No. Okay. So I need a motion to rescind the existing policy, members. Councillor Moran, do I have a seconder to rescind? I don't have a seconder to rescind. We have an alternative motion. So there's a recommendation. Okay. So, members, if we're not rescinding, what are we doing? Well, Lord Mayor, I'd like to propose a, uh, an alternative, if I may. You may, Councillor Martin. Um, it is that Council uh, defers uh, the whistleblowers policy to a committee workshop. Okay, do you have a second? I do. Councillor Hender, you'd like to speak to that matter, please? Yes, Councillor I would just Martin. briefly, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, I have proposed this on two grounds. The first is, and it's not in your papers, you would have to go through to the links to see it, um, is that the internal whistleblower rule seeks to replace the current guidelines with guidelines more aligned with the Public Interest Disclosure Bill 2016. Now, this bill was laid aside in State Parliament in 2017. It is still under consideration and, as far as I know, hasn't been adopted or rejected or amended by uh, the Upper House. Therefore, we are moving to approve this change on the basis of guidelines contained in new legislation which have yet to be approved. And the second is that I believe that the bar that is set by these new guidelines is significantly lower than applies in other places. And I cite as an example. Sorry, hi. Um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> hi, yes, I get it, thank you. <laughs> um, the fact is though, that the Office of Public uh, Integrity requires that in reporting there is an obligation uh, that anyone uh, who is a whistleblower make sure that um, they are certain that they have reasonable suspicions of corruption and serious or systemic misconduct and maladministration. Whereas the City of Adelaide, I fear, is, is proposing um, something that is quite at odds. Uh, the proposed guidelines for whistleblowers says the new Act um, does not 
provide, or the new guidelines do not provide protection to people who knowingly make false claims or who are reckless about their claims. And further in the glossary, an appropriate disclosure will occur only if the person believes on reasonable grounds that the information is true, and only if the person making the complaint is in a position to form a reasonable belief, and provided that the complaint is made to what's called a responsible officer, who is specially appointed to the CEO. So there are all of those hurdles to jump through where the Office of Public Integrity simply says that you need reasonable suspicions of corruption or serious or systemic misconduct and maladministration. We have set the bar very, very high. Um, and my fear is that uh, though we have never had a whistleblower's complaint in the organisation, to my knowledge, uh, we will never have one if the bar is set that high. And therefore, I'm asking the administration to conduct a workshop at which we can explore all of these related issues and uh, come to a conclusion. Councillor, time is up. Uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. I will ask a question, if I can, before I take that to your seconder, who's Councillor Hender. Can I ask our acting CEO, Beth Davidson Park, please? Um, the councillor is looking to defer this matter to a workshop. Is there any time sensitivity about this matter? No, that's not the matter. And Acting CEO, do you have any comment before I move this to the seconder? Um, Lord Mayor, I'll just check with Director Matheson if he has a comment to make or else um, Rudy. Don't, okay. Uh, the seconder of the motion was Councillor Megan Hender. The floor is yours. So I just um, urge councillors to support this deferral. Uh, this is a matter that, that um, is important to us. We make sure that we've got a policy that people can actually use. And, and given that we've got a full agenda, it's not something we can easily debate in the chamber. So it just seems simpler and easier that we push this through to a, a, a committee where we can actually get a real grip on it um, because it's important to us that we have the right policies in place. Um, it's just not appropriate for us to debate it here, I don't think. So a deferral seems like the most sensible solution. Okay, so members, and noting of course that the audit committee itself uh, took comfort in this matter, but uh, this is certainly within your right to defer this. Um, do I have any further debate? Councillor Moran. Um, I don't think this is necessary to defer this at all. Um, the bar should be, uh, it's, it's your opinion whether it's too low or too high. Um, this has gone through the relevant committees. I, I don't see any reason. I don't want to go to a workshop. I trust our expert advice. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate? Councillor Martin, I'm going back to you to sum up on your motion. Sum Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? The motion carries. Okay, so members, that concludes item seven on your agenda. Now, members, with due regard to the number of people we have attending on, in the gallery and welcome, um, we do have a motion on notice, which is item 11.9. But of course, we have many items to work through prior to 11.9, but I'm going to bring 11.9 forward for debate. So, Councillor Martin, this is your motion. You've moved a motion on the agenda with regards to fossil fuels and sustainable procurement. Item 11.9. So when you're ready, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, do you require a second? Uh, you will, Councillor. So um, do I have a second to the motion? Yes, we do, Councillor Corbell Moore. <laughs> Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I note this is a matter of uh, great interest to the fossil uh, fuel-free Adelaide group who are in the public gallery tonight. And uh, I know as a supporter of carbon neutrality, Lord Mayor, you will want to say something uh, later about this too. The essence of this motion is to demonstrate the City of Adelaide not only talks the talk, but we walk the walk on carbon neutrality. Indeed, it isn't a question of why are we doing this, it's a question of why we haven't done it sooner. Now, we are all indirectly exposed to investment in fossil fuels through major banks. Uh, the last research I saw shows that the big four banks have investment in coal and gas projects alone of about 50 
billion dollars. That's fifty billion dollars in coal and gas alone. But there are now more than thirty local government areas in Australia who, on behalf of their ratepayers, have decided to uh, not invest in banks and other financial institutions which have fossil fuel investments. Now they include a host of regional councils, but also Lord Mayor, the City of Melbourne, uh, with which this city is in a race to see who's carbon neutral first, the City of Fremantle and Leichhardt Council, one of the major Sydney metropolitan councils, and the West Australian and Victorian local government uh, representative bodies are telling their members that it's a good idea for local governments in those states to divest. Now, they are doing it uh, not only because they want to, but because they can. There is no legislative or regulatory impediment to divesting in this manner in any Australian or uh, federal law. Now, um, I might add that uh, uh, the, 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 the driver for it all is that councils in this country are seeking to reflect their values, their values on sustainability and carbon neutrality. Uh, and that is uh, exactly what's happening overseas. Um, similar policies have been adopted by educational institutions like Stanford, Yale and the University of California, by cities like Seattle, San Francisco and even Portland, and there are major organisations around the world. Uh, and they include the World, World Council of Churches the, and the British Medical Association, all major organisations that have done so. Now, in Australia, councils which have divestment policies have reduced their levels of investment over time by 50 to 70 per cent using what are called ADIs. Now, these are authorised deposit taking institutions. The information on them is widely available. And what's more, it's now such a big business. Lord Mayor, may I have another moment? I'll look to the floor. Members, I need a majority in order for that to happen. Do I have one? Yes, you do. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, the information is so widely available that now Standard and & Poor's and uh, also Moody's provide financial ratings on the comparative qualities of ADIs. Now, I'm not proposing an overnight thing. I'm asking that our finance staff uh, have a look at this issue, come up with a policy that's consistent with our Treasury guidelines and with the competitive interest rate pricing and deliver to us a policy setting on which they can uh, report regularly to us. It is about setting a goal and then reporting to this chamber on the way in which we go about divestment. Um, Lord Mayor, this is long overdue, and I urge members of this chamber to think about this council's position on carbon neutrality and ask themselves whether they are supporting that policy if they reject this. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, before I go to your seconder, who's Councillor Priscilla Corbell Moore, I am conscious of the uh, time that the supporting administration comment came out. Members, have you all had an opportunity to read what was said to you, which is the administrating, administration supporting comments with regards to this motion. Would you like some reading time? Okay, members, I'm going to give you two or three minutes. You should have that all before you. If you don't, please put your hand up and we'll get a copy to you. But it's a one and a half page report. I'll give you a few minutes to read it. Then we'll continue the debate.
Okay, members, I've been advised by our acting CEO that given that given the uh, administration response to this matter was um, with literally within the last two hours, copies of this were, I believe, made available outside. Yes, thank you. Um, so I do hope that everyone had an opportunity to see this. Now, members, I've got multiple members who would like to speak to this matter. The seconder of the, mo of the motion was Councillor Priscilla Cor Corbell Moore. I'll then hand to Councillor Antic, Councillor Moran, Councillor Abiyad, and Councillor Malani. Then Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Corbell Moore, the floor is yours as the seconder. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I believe this is important for us to support because, for the sake of consistency, our Lake City Council was applied to its decision making for our strategic plan. Green is a, one of the four key pillars. And we have put ourselves as positioned as a leader in environmental change. And I think it's um, important for this council to take a stance to be the first council in South Australia to adopt this motion. And it has been brought to us um, by the community. So when it's brought to us by the community, strongly advocated um, a, a well-worded motion like this with the administration comment that's in line in support of, I think um, it's really important for this council to adopt it. And we have been briefed recently at a committee workshop, workshop by Sarah Barker, special counsel, counsel for Minta Ellison, who's advised us about the growing importance globally of climate change, corporate mitigation and risk. And we are undertaking a body of work in order to report back on risks that this council are exposed to in relation to climate change. So whilst at the moment, the administration comment really clearly indicate that we don't directly have any investments in companies with fossil fuel related assets. I think it's important that we adopt this motion to secure the future. And it is in line with our Adelaide City Council, Council's carbon neutral objectives. So I um, speak in favour of it and I hope that you will all endorse it as well. And just a final note, it is interesting that Councillor Martin's moved it because he hasn't always been the strongest advocate on carbon neutrality, oh, really? um, yeah, carbon neutral it's objectives. So it is interesting um, to have him become the Iron mover Iron of this Iron. motion. I'm happy to endorse it. I've had a strong green agenda um, consistently through, throughout this council. Um, so. I'll open it up to the chamber and see what you want to say. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. More Councillor Antic. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It is an interesting point, the very one well, well, well made, I might say. Um, another interesting point, of course, is that not only is this a motion um, about uh, environmental credentials, it's also another recycled motion, Lord Mayor, because uh, this was, as many of you will uh, note, originally moved by the erstwhile Councillor Robert Sims, who I believe is with us. Uh, tonight in the uh, chamber. So uh, we have him, uh, of course, to uh, thank or shake our fists at, as the case may be. Um, in my case, the latter, Lord Mayor, because um, the, uh, the, uh, the topic of divestment uh, is, was, I might say, back in 2015, a very trendy topic. Um, and, uh, well, Yes, maybe in ergo apartments, but uh, anyway. Uh, but uh, but in any event, um, the, the reality of the situation is, Lord Mayor, we've, we've been down this road. I think at the last occasion, I was the only person to, or the only councillor to object to it. Uh, not because I don't love a good dose of moral panic, uh, Lord Mayor. Who who doesn't? But uh, but uh, but uh, uh, mainly because of the reason, Lord Mayor, that um, the the issue here is that 
we are trying to run an organisation which has fiscal responsibility. And the reality is, Lord Mayor, that we cannot constrain our staff. There are two reasons. We cannot constrain our staff by uh, measures outside uh, fiscal responsibility. And the second one is, Lord Mayor, we don't have any possible. We've just been told that. So this is a toothless tiger. I mean, we, quite why we're endorsing this is, is anyone's guess. So, um, look, I um, thank you once again to Councillor Sims for rehashing this one. And uh, it's been good to see him here. Um, but uh, I can't support this. I, uh, I, uh, 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 for the reasons I've just said, I, I, I just don't know what the point of this other than to make uh, Tuesday night a longer one. So I won't be supporting it. Councillor. Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. I, of course, completely support um, divesting of, of fossil fuel and, and not investing it in it in any big way. However, I won't vote for this either. I already did vote for it once. And I find that this motion should not have been accepted. Um, Councillor Sims, ex-Senator Sims, had moved it and we agreed and it looks like, to, in a practical way, the administration have, have uh, attempted to, to do some of it. But I think the, most, the seminal part for me is that uh, it is anticipated that most banking organisations will have some form of exposure to fossil fuel industry, either directly or indirectly. Councillor Martin's motion is quite clear. It's to divest, to not, to not invest or use any bank or other financial agencies which do not invest in a fossil fuel interest where they're a competitive rep to council. Now he's put a few provisos, but it's a fairly clear motion. And as our staff are already doing it, I think this is ultra vires. And I won't, I don't want to encourage this sort of um, behaviour from councillors just before an election. A councillor that has been an enthusiastic carbon credit um, yeah, uh, has not supported the Green Initiative at all. I do not know why that the carbon neutral people have chosen this councillor um, and I won't be supporting it. I think it's nonsense. Councillor, Councillor Aviad, followed by Councillor Marani, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Look, a couple of things. I, I'll probably flag to move an amendment to this motion if that is possible. And I'll probably start with that yeah, and I'll speak to that if I get a second there, which is okay. Uh, you need to share with the your fellow elected members, sure. Councillor Abiyad, as to what that amendment may be, and then we'll look for a seconder. So the council requests administration to provide a report with regards to the impact of giving preference to banks and other financial agencies. Councillor. Pretty much the rest of the motion, Lord Mayor. Uh, is the same. So just request the administration to provide a report with regards to the impact of giving preference to banks and then the rest can continue to be the same. So it be banks and financial agencies which do not invest in fossil fuels where there's a competitive rate of return to council, etc. Et so Councillor, if you could please look to your screen to ensure that what you're asking is being recorded properly. and direct the Secretariat accordingly to capture the correct words, and then I'll look to the floor for a second to continue your debate. Okay, so Councillor, is your screen working? Yep. Yes, it is. So are the words captured? Correctly? Yeah, request the administration provide a report with regards to the impact, the impact of giving preference to banks and then continuing as normal. Okay. So, members, you're clear what the amendment is looking to achieve. The council is looking for a report on this matter as opposed to a decision on this matter. The report will then come back to this council. So, members, we look for a seconder for this amendment. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Slama, the floor is yours, Councillor Abia. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I've, um, I did have the opportunity to look into this um, a bit further, and I did have a meeting this um, afternoon uh, with Mr. John, uh, Jim Allen. Uh, he called me on the weekend for a chat about this, and obviously we received numerous amounts of emails uh, from concerned citizens with this regard. Uh, I'm not completely dead set against this, Lord Mayor, but I have two issues. I have three issues, but I'm not going to talk about the third. Uh, my two biggest issues with this with this motion is the word directs. 
the administration and to give preference. Uh, I think it's really important for us to have all the information before us before we make a decision. Uh, we have seen through the administrative remarks and comments uh, that there's opportunities for us to improve and we have been improving uh, and these are great things that we're doing. Uh, but I would like for this council at least to be given the opportunity to have this report come back to it detailing very clearly what the impacts will look like on this council and potentially what we can do more of if we are not doing enough. So uh, to actually um, have a motion moved in this council by what was said by previous councillors, by someone that isn't as compassionate about carbon neutrality concerns me, uh, especially given that we're entering caretaker mode to commit a council uh, into a decision and make this a political issue as a problem. The right thing to do is to get all the information before us and to make decisions based on the information we receive. Uh, because the last thing we want to see is a forced motion on this council, which then will be unforced through a political process at the election, and you get a new council that comes in that throws this directly out. I think the best thing we can do from a leadership perspective is apply this from the ground up and also from up down, but to embed it within our organisation, to actually engage elected members through this process, to understand a little bit more about what that means. I went on a bit of an education today um, and over the last few years to understand this a bit more. So I would also think that elected members would benefit from that process and then being understanding a bit more about what the impact looks like and what if we can do more in that space. And I'm open to doing that. But the most important thing throughout that whole process is we do have a public and corporate social responsibility, which we all understand, but we also have a very important responsibility to our ratepayers in the City of Adelaide that pay $100 million a year in rates. And we need to understand what that impact would look like on our ratepayers if we make a decision against a specific banking institution. And maybe, Lord Mayor, that the banks are not the problem. It might be the cars we use. It might be the rubbish trucks we use, the fuel we use. There might be a whole heap of other things that we need to change and not necessarily the banks. Time so I'd, Councillor. I'd ask members to support this motion and to wait for the report to understand the full impact. Thank you, Lord Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. So you are debating a proposed amendment, councillors, seconded by Councillor Slama. Councillor Slama, do you wish to speak to the proposed amendment? I will. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just briefly, not a great deal more, but as, as, a, as someone who's worked in banking for a while, um, I understand the other side of the equation, whereas I completely support the councillor's motion in, in the spirit of what we're trying to achieve. There might not be a single credit card left in this company, or there might not, might not be a savings account left by anyone, any supporter of any of these systems, if we truly look at exactly what, what we're trying to achieve here, if we refuse. So I guess uh, Councillor Abbey had some, Amendment softens it a little bit, but allows us to understand the process, understand through the administration that it is possible um, for us to, to look at this. And, and but I'd want to see more detail. Yeah, I was more concerned about the practicality of this. For us to refuse any of the big fours would leave us without money, would leave us without banking and uh, without modern day convenience of, of anything. So I think we've just got to be reasonable and and um, and fair, but also. Uh, uh, diligent in, in how we go about it. Thank you, Councillor Slamet. I've now got speakers on the amendment in this order. Councillor Milani, Councillor Martin, Councillor Ander. Councillor Milani. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll be brief. I support the um, amendment and uh, see um, merit in us investigating this further. Um, I, I really want to say before, I nearly choked on my Wheaties when I heard that this. Uh, uh, motion came from Councillor Martin, the greatest opponent to carbon neutrality in every strategy and plan this council has ever put forward to the chamber. Um, but I've got um, Councillor Abiad gave some good examples where there might be other considerations. I think of the business upgrade finance scheme for an example, and, and I can't see where it, that might be impacted from the original motion as an example. Um, so I'd like to get more information. Therefore, I urge uh, members to support the report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin, speaking to the amendment. Yes, I am, Lord Mayor. Look, um, unfortunately, Councillor Abbott's research is flawed. The motion that he's proposed was presented to Council by Councillor Sims in 2014. In fact, I spoke to Councillor Sims at the weekend and acknowledged his contribution in Facebook. The motion 
led to an investigation by the administration. And then in 2015, the administration completed the report. And in the administration's files is the word or words, no action, no action. It was never actioned. And the reason it was never actioned is open to speculation. But the motion has been here before. And tonight, history is repeating itself. The same people are calling for reports instead of asking for action. Now, it is not correct, as the administration says, that we are not invested in banks that are carrying on trade in fossil fuels. Our banker is the National Australia Bank. They are one of the big fours. They are regarded in the reports that have been provided to the local government associations in Victoria and WA as one of the big four in which it is proposed that we shouldn't invest. We can invest in banks who are divested of fossil fuels, and they include the Adelaide Bendigo Bank in our own hometown. The bank of this city is one of those banks in which we can invest and divest ourselves of fossil fuels. Now, let me just say that some of the, uh, the comments around this room about my attitude to uh, carbon neutrality and greening are completely fallacious. Fallacious in the extreme. I, I am a supporter of carbon neutrality. Councillor Rabia, please. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. He's a bit of a oaf, isn't he? Um, Lord Councillor, Mayor, please. Language. Oaf. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lord Mayor, I have supported carbon neutrality at every turn. I do not support the purchase of carbon credits when they're used as a substitute for any meaningful action on climate change. And that is what's been proposed time and time again in this chamber. We have people who are climate change deniers. They say it doesn't exist. They say it's much more important to be concerned about the big end of town, the banking institutions. That is, that is not the way in which we deal with carbon neutrality. That is not the way in which we parade our credentials as one of the world's first carbon neutral cities. Lord Mayor, this proposal of Councillor Abbeyhardt's is not only inappropriate, it's just a repeat of what he did four years ago. Now, I urge councillors to think carefully about, about what's been pr proposed. And I ask you also to have a look at the administration's recommendation. It supports this. It says we can do it. That is what the administration is saying. Time. That is what members need to consider. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hender, followed by Councillor Antic. Members, you are debating a amendment. Lord Mayor, I just I have just got a question. I, I'm minded to support the original motion, um, put our money where our mouth is, but I'm also um, cognizant of the need to ensure that we don't uh, leave our ratepayers with any unintended consequences. So what I'd like is some administrative comment on the original motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Can I refer that matter to our Acting CEO, Beth Davidson-Park? Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd ask uh, Director Matheson to make a comment, please. Through you, Lord Mayor, if I'm interpreting the question, because it's a broad question, if you're talking in relation to the capacity to implement, I think um, the response that we gave members today was about the capacity for us to look at our Treasury policy and to put the preferential treatment of people who aren't involved with the fossil fuel industry into that Treasury management policy. It does clearly state in there as well, though, that the impact in relation to that is as yet unknown, and we haven't had the time, obviously, to do the research to know the extent for both direct and indirect that are actually in the market at the moment. So we just haven't had time to do that to that level of research. We could place it within the review of our Treasury management policy and then we'd actually work our way through the implications of that as we as we went through. Can you support it? Councillor, does that answer your question? Councillor Hender, does that answer your question? Mm. Um, how long would a report take to, to come through? To, how long would it take to get that information so that we can make a more informed decision? Mm -hmm. 
A little bit hard to estimate right now, Councillor, to be honest. I think I'll be fair to say there'll be a couple of months for us to come back to the Chamber, I would have thought. By the time we actually go and do some of the investigation, lean back on some of the interstate work from what's been presented tonight, um, we then obviously have to test and interrogate that from a local perspective and also test and interrogate those that aren't involved in any of the um, investment in that industry. So I'm really, at this stage, I'm not sure, but I'd suggest it would be a couple of months before a report landed back in. And if I could have the indulgence of one further question, Lord Mayor. Um, can, Councillor, Councillor Milani uh, mentioned the um, green business upgrade finance, the, the building upgrade finance. <laughs> Is there a possibility that some, that there'll be some, would that be part of the investigation, part of the report? I'm, I'm, I mean, obviously I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get some action, um, but, uh, um, but I don't want to do it if it's <coughs> reckless. I'd suggest from my perspective we would have to look at all of those aspects. I think the key thing from my end is um, the unexpected or unanticipated consequences that is the one thing, which I think is what we made sure we, I emphasised in the response, is that the exact impacts of this I'm unsure of um, and we could take either of the paths in front of us tonight, but I, I'm not in a position to estimate that right now. Okay, Councillor Henda, thank you. Councillor Antic, you're speaking regarding the amendment. To the amendment, quite right. Um, yeah, look, I just I thought it was quite interesting that this comes a week and a half ago after we had a, uh, a deputation on the subject and it's just come out of thin air. And I was reminding myself of the subject now because I was scratching my head and um, I just found an old advertiser article here about the City Council and looking to buy interstate carbon credits. Buying carbon credits interstate has been all but abandoned by the Adelaide City Council as it moves to explore options closer to home. This comes after councillors Philip Martin and Anne Moran, sorry, um, uh, said that they were shocked to learn how much of ratepayers' money was being used to cut Adelaide's carbon dioxide emissions while the benefits were being discovered in other parts of the country. I mean, Lord Mayor, I'm being misrepresented. Well, that's what it says, so it's not really misrepresentation, but I just thought I'd point that out. I won't support the amendment either, by the way, but anyway, it's just, a, just an observation. Right. Okay. So, thank you, Councillor Antic. Councillor Corbell, Royal Colour, followed by Councillor Moran. Councillor Corbell. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't be supporting the amendment. Um, I do think this is sufficiently worded to give our council some wriggle room. It talks about giving preference to banks and other financial agencies, and that the investment is compliant with our existing policy. Noting that the policy is coming up for review for our treasury policy. So, I think that we, we, have, we do have sufficient wriggle room and it is going to send the wrong message if we just do a report. I don't think that's taking sufficient action. I think we need to support this motion at, at the original substantive motion as it stands. There's already, to my knowledge, at least 30 other councils across Australia who have divestment motions on their books already. So it can't, can't be the place that all these councils are getting themselves in such a state of hot water that they, they're positioning themselves at risk. If we follow suit, I think it sends a good, strong message that is in line and consistently aligned to our strategic plan and carbon, carbon neutral Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Moran? Look, it's easy to play to the crowd in this issue, but we, this is not our money. Um, and um, it's easy, it's an easy cheap shot uh, when we are already well down the path of this thanks to previous motions. This is a very directive motion. The staff have already told Councillor Hender that they need two months. This is not a complete report. They don't know what the implications are. And we are have the heavy burden of uh, controlling the public purse, as I said, not our money. So we must proceed much more cautiously than, than Joe Blogg saying, I want to go to this bank. There are lots of other things that banks do. Should we avoid any that deal with China? They've got a pretty um, iffy human rights record, or do we deny banks that, ha that are involved in li large sheep exports and so forth? Um, no, we don't, so we're not quite that moral. But I'm happy to go along with this, but it has to be a fiscally responsible thing to do. And 
as, as I said, our staff have already admitted, in, well, from what I heard, that it would be reckless to go back to the original motion. And so I urge you to give them a couple of months so that we can be truly informed as to the, um, the effects of what we do, which banks we go for and, and how we line up with the Le Local Government Finance Committee. So um, I urge you to support um, Councillor Abiyad's motion, even if you're not keen on the first motion, it would be handy to get that up over the second motion. Thank you. Members, Councillor Wilkinson, you're debating the amendment? Uh, yeah, just listening to the discussion, I was of a view just to support the original motion, but I don't know that there's any harm in a couple of months being taken to get further information from our administration so that we're going into this with eyes wide open. But you know, as Councillor Corbell Moore said, it's one of the four pillars of this uh, council that we're a green council. We're trying to show leadership in that space. We're trying to be the first carbon neutral city. Lord Mayor talks a lot about that. So I'm of a view that we should be going down this path, but um, I don't mind us just deferring it to get a bit more information before we, before we take that step. Thank you. Members, before I hand you back to the mover of the amendment, Councillor Abiyad, uh, I will support the amendment based on the fact on a full and thorough investigation and a quantification, um, but in no way should that be interpreted of a lessening of my enthusiasm for our goals in terms of sustainability and carbon neutrality by 2025. It's more a reflection upon uh, good governance. Councillor Rabia. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, this is exactly what it is. Um, and no one should go home and sleep better knowing you divested from banks, but you're still spending money at the at the petrol tank and filling out every single car in this council. I mean, if we want to make real change, let's make real change. Uh, let's not just provide a lip service approach and deliver no results. I think it's really important that we uh, wait for that information from administration. We've clearly heard from our finance team that we they would like a bit more time to understand the impacts and to understand what this looks like. and. Uh, it would be good to bring about other finance models and other things we can do and achieve as well. Uh, it's important we embed this in the culture of the organisation, otherwise that change will change again and then again and then again. So if it's something we want to take on board seriously, uh, let's work through it seriously and convince most, I know there's probably one that we can't convince, <laughs> to get over the line with this and to also not wake up on the other side of the election board now on the 9th of November with a different council that's going to bring this back in and go, hold on, we're not quite sure about this motion. Why was it approved on? Where's the information? Was it backed by anything? And I think it's important we have all the information at hands before we make the call. So I'd ask members to support the amendment and the motion, and I look forward to um, receiving that report back so we can make a good decision, a well-informed decision that is a long-lasting one. Thank you. Thank you, members. So I'm putting the amendment before you for the vote. Those in favour of the amendment, those against the amendment, so the amendment will carry, which now becomes the substantive motion. Division. Well, members, will vote on the substantive motion first. So I put this, the motion as amended before you because I don't see any evidence of further debate. Yes, I put it before you. Those in favour? Of the substantive. I'm putting the motion as amended prior to you for the vote. So you can sum up if you wish. Yeah, I will, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, this is just about the most appalling outcome I could have anticipated. We are, we are adopting an approach that is all, uh, already shown in other places to have been rejected. The city of Melbourne, the city of Leichhardt, the city of Fremont have all made these decisions. And it is a decision of this body to defer for another report as it did in 2014 and to suggest that somehow there's virtue in that. There is no virtue. That is a failure, a dismal failure. And frankly, to claim that you're a carbon neutral city and endorse uh, this rejection as you've done, Lord Mayor, it is uh, a reflection on our inability to achieve the outcomes that we aspired to so long ago. Members, I put this matter before you as amended. Those in favour? Those against? So the motion as amended carries.
Thank you, members. So, members, that's dealt with item 11.9. Now, members, I understand we have technology issues. Whose iPad is not working? The vast majority. Okay. So, members, uh, I believe this may not be able to be addressed uh, progressively as we go. The, iPad, the iPads continue to drop. So, members, what we will do is that we will Members, do you have hard copies of your papers or are you solely reliant on iPad tonight? You are? Yeah. Okay. All right, members, I will keep going. So that means I'm going to take you to item 8.3. So members, item 8.3 is 88 O'Connell Street, Guiding Principles. You have a recommendation in front of you, members, to note and approve. Councillor Slava, you're moving as? As, as printed on me. Okay, so I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Milani, Councillor Slava, would you like to speak to the matter 8.3? Happy to note, uh, no, no, defer, sorry, just defer my... Um... Reserve my right. You're reserving your right. Okay. Councillor Milani, you seconded the motion 8.3. You have a, it is a, uh, to note and approve. I'll reserve my right. Reserving your right. Councillor Abiyad, followed by Councillor Cleary. Okay. I'll, I'll hold on. I'll hold on. I'll hold on. Okay, Councillor Clare hand followed by Councillor Abia. Uh, Lord Mayor, I just wanted to uh, note everyone to note that I have a, a perceived and an actual conflict of interest in this, given I live within 450 metres of the site. Uh, so I'm very, I would be prepared to participate in the debate, but I certainly won't be voting. Thank you for advising your fellow members for the record, Councillor Clare. I appreciate it. Councillor Abia. Uh, Lord Mayor, I move the motion to be put. Lord Mayor, can I ask for a question on Councillor Kerhan? Hello, Councillor Well, I, I, I wasn't understanding that. Um, can we get some advice that we don't have to declare that anymore? I, I, I believe that well, Councillor Clarehan is so like conflict of interest. You're asking for advice regarding Councillor Clarehan's declaration of a conflict. Yeah, I was under understanding that we did not have to. Okay, let me clarify that first, Councillor Abia, then I will come back to you. Acting CEO, Beth Davidson Park. Uh, Lord Mayor, we're just getting some advice from our Manager of Governance. Thank you, Rudy. Through to Lord Mayor. Um, as you know, conflicts of interest need to be declared and it's up to the member to assess whether that's the case or not. Um, Councillor Clarehan has in the past indeed declared, perceived an action on the same basis um, and has today decided to be consistent with that today, which is her judgment call. Uh, indeed, when looking at uh, perceived conflicts of interest, you need to look at what the reasonable person, uh, the fair-minded um, and impartial person would do in those circumstances. So I can't make that judgment call on behalf of uh, Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Councillor Mulaney. I'm sure that answers your question. Is it is ultimately the responsibility of the member to make that declaration or not? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I, I know. Councillor Mulaney, I've got Councillor Abia. Well, I want to just. Is that right, Councillor Abia? I just want to. Because I'll declare the same. I'm going to go back to Councillor Abia because I enabled you to ask well, that question. I have to go up front, Lord Mayor. She's got a Oh, you're making the same declaration? I'm making the same declaration. I'm making the same declaration. Councillor. Even though I don't believe a fair and reasonable one person that would. Close, Sorry? Are you that close? Oh, I, I must be about within a bee's whisker. Previous. So um, I'll just do the same, Lord Mayor. Okay. Thank you for advising your fellow elected members. Councillor Abia. I want to withdraw this statement. You're going to withdraw? withdraw. My motion could be put at this stage. I understand. Okay. So, members, do I have any further debate with regards to item 8.3? Councillor Wilkinson, followed by Councillor Martin. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, um, I'm um, pleased uh, to have um, uh, uh, had influence on these guiding principles by way of the built form uh, aspect where the guiding principles as originally were didn't provide 
much in the way of guidance on the bill form and, and the guiding principles um, now have a provision that the uh, uh, that the bill form around the perimeter be two storeys to match the scale of all the buildings on all four street frontages uh, rather than just words to complement and things like that which can be interpreted very differently to the which consultants advise and developers acting further down the line. So, and also for that the uh, the uh, tall elements of the development um, be then set back 12 metres. So when you're walking down the street, you're looking on any other street at buildings which are two-storey scale, the same as all the buildings around Adelaide, and the taller buildings are set 12 metres back, which is like what we see in the East End. If you look at the uh, Grenfell Street aspect of the East End, there are two-storey perimeter buildings and the taller buildings are set back 12 metres. Um, I personally would have preferred to have had it a little bit lower than eight storeys, but um, uh, I think is if the six, if the seventh and eighth storeys are done as penthouse levels and further recessed, as a, which is a design technique that can be used to sort of mitigate the, the scale, that that would help. I, I'm not, and we've set that as a maximum, not not for penthouses to then be put on top of the eight storeys, but for that to be the very top level. And, uh, and I would hope that we would then see. Uh, that um, when the schemes come back, that we see those upper two levels uh, further recessed to, because uh, the east end development is six storeys, what we see in the east end. So, um, but you know, we've had to pay, um, you know, what we've paid for the site, um, uh, uh, and, and we need to be uh, able to have a reasonable um, uh, return on ratepayers' money whilst not seeking the developers' profit as a as, uh, as a, as a, as a developer would have to, we can act in the public benefit to try and get as good an outcome as we can. Um, so given the circumstances of what we've paid for the site, I think that um, helps. Um, and and I would also like to see that we're providing you know, a double basement car park with ample parking for this uh, for, for, for the area so that it actually helps parking in North Adelaide rather than the line would go get other types of schemes like that, which would be used as ways to under cater for parking. I think it's important that we get that um, the parking built scale uh, right. Um, I'm not so fussed about the variety of housing. Um, I think we just need to serve the local local community there. Um, Time, councillor. Thank you. Thank you, councillor. Now, councillor Lardy, in an abundance of well, before I go to the next speaker. In an abundance of caution, given yeah. your declaration, you did second the motion. Yeah, I withdraw my second declaration. Can I, thank you, Councillor Vardy. Can I look for an alternate seconder, please, to this motion, to Councillor Slammer's motion? Councillor Rabiard, thank you. So we will continue the debate. And we now have uh, Councillor Wilkinson has spoken. I'll look to Councillor Martin and then Councillor Moran. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, I don't accept this at all. Um, the alarm bells are ringing all over. Adelaide so loudly that they puncture your eardrums. Now, Councillor Abbott supports eight stories or more, who knows. Um, he believes that that's the best way to get our money back. That is consistent with scenario one that was put to the council in the papers of July, of December 12th last year, eight stories at 88, and then flog it off. That's your view, Lord Mayor. That's Councillor Moran's view, but let me say to you, it is not the view of the people of North Adelaide. 35. The people of North Adelaide. 35. The people of North Adelaide. 35. Members, please. Councillor Martin. Right. Members. The people of North Adelaide are Councilor not Abiyad. happy. And you know, the irony of all this is that the professional advice this council has received, the consultant's advice, the consultation feedback, all of it is being ignored. And those who are making this decision to ignore it all know that they're making a mistake. You know you're making a mistake. Councillor Abiyad has been schlepping all over North Adelaide, talking to organisations, saying, look, you can't make eight stories a political issue. Please don't make it a political issue. He told the North Adelaide Society on Friday, we don't want this to be a political issue. It's just business. So the team leader, Team Abiyat Hassad, a uh, uh, Hasey leader, is saying, Team Abiyat Hasey leader is saying to everybody all over the city. Correcting, Lord Mayor, please. 
This is very disrespectful. Oh, I don't know what he's talking about. Councillor Martin, can you please continue your I'm talking, about, I'm talking about your joint views, Lord Mayor, on 88 O'Connell, that you want to see eight stories or more. And in fact, I thought you said 14 on right? Councillor, we'd like to know your views. You're the one that's speaking. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm happy to continue. Now, this will be the first council election that has ever been fought on 88 O'Connell Street. It is an issue for people. People do not want to see eight storeys. They see it as inhibiting residential amenity in the area. And moreover, businesses are concerned to see the kind of development that will only come by council's close involvement in the project. Not at sale, not at sale that's been proposed, not the let's get our 24 million back and get out of the air as quickly as we can. They want to see a proper development that includes consideration of businesses and consideration of residents. And to ignore that at this time and to plump for eight stories is inviting the residents of North Adelaide to tell you that they don't like this council, they don't like you. And let me tell you, Lord Mayor, it is impossible, it is impossible to convince people, it, it is impossible to convince people that anything greater than three or four stories is appropriate. Time, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Well, I'm absolutely disgusted by um, what uh, the North Ward Councillors said there. Uh, Sue and I have been battling the Lacornia side ever since we've been on council. Uh, we know the, uh, I think Sue probably came on council because of the Lacornia site, um, and I inherited it. Um, a little bit before her, but she was a prime mover, so she knows the ins and outs and the difficulties. Buying the Lacornia site uh, was the um, solution of last resort. We all realise that. Um, and unfortunately, what's happening here um, is that a ca an election's coming up, and this is being used as an electoral um, toy um, by one councillor here. Um, None of us really um, can go against the consultation. The consultation was quite clear. I went to most of the meetings. I didn't stay for all of them, but I got a clear indication that people wanted certain things, certain things set in stone. They wanted a, a low scale to the street. They wanted two areas of undercroft uh, parking. They wanted some open space in the middle of the site. Now, they were all absolute givens. And this is where I thought, in any issue like this, I follow Sandy Wilkinson, even if I, if I can't see it, because he knows what he's talking about. And the only bit of the development that was movable was a mid-block tower for residents. We could let them build, they're allowed to build 17 storeys on that street. We could let them build six storeys right to the street and get even more money from this side. But we're not going to do that. We respect the streetscape and the and what people want. Unfortunately for the public, when they were consulted, they don't know what we know. They don't know that even at eight stories in the middle, we ain't breaking even. So don't don't let Phil's um, Phil's um, thing that you know oh, we're trying to make a profit. We're trying to get all our money back. We're not. It's just how much you balance the pain of the people that don't live in North Adelaide. Um, against how high North Adelaide's prepared for that tower to go. And from what I heard, they were prepared for eight, if that made it financially feasible. Naturally, if you took all the money considerations away and said, how tall would you like it? I'd probably say three or four, four or six, maybe the whole thing. But then you say, okay, if you lose this amount of money and your rates go up by that, would we be prepared to go to eight to 10? Oh, yes, of course I would. It's a bit like the tram down O'Connell Street. Do you want a tram? Yeah, fine, that'd be fabulous. Uh, you lose all your on-street parking and right turns. Oh, nice, no, I don't really want it now. Consultation is only based on the information people are given. And even without that information, North Adelaide people, as long as it was mid-block and not visible, and as Sandy said, you can design it so the upper two storeys uh, are even less visible, they were prepared for that to happen as long as they could have the underground car park and we can I have three minutes? I've never asked for it before. Two minutes more. Chamber. Thanks. Um, as long as they got the low streetscape and the double, very expensive underground car park. So for a councillor to who knows that we're about to go into to confidence and this is 
all you people, if you saw what we were going to see in confidence, would say, oh, <laughs> eight stories, maybe a bit higher. I know you would say that. But he knows that we can't tell you that, and that's what he's doing. And he will go to his election and he'll say, as he has, Anne Moran, Sandy Wilkinson, uh, Sue, Sue Clarahan, uh, Martin Hazy, all support eight stories. I'm fabulous, I support three to six. Don't let him fool you. North Adelaide people aren't that dumb. So, uh, but unfortunately it's a, it's a battle. We have to go, every election that I've been on has had the Lacornu site as an issue. Now we've solved it. I read in the paper that Councillor Martin said that North Adelaide's been neglected. Oh my God. I mean, I'd like to say that too, but we brought the Lacornu site. We brought the GPO. We are a well looked after suburb, well financed, as this is the biggest property thing we've bought. So it, I think you have to read his comments with three months to an election coming and then ignore them. Thank you. Councillor Rabiard, you seconded the motion. You wish to speak to it? Please, Lord Mayor, thank you. Uh, Lord Mayor, as you're probably aware and the Chamber's aware, I'm a central ward councillor. I'm not elected by North Adelaide, uh, but I am concerned that we have spent. 35% of our rateable base in one year on one site, and I want to see a good outcome for the community. And I want to be able to, when I stand in this chamber and make a decision for the people of North Adelaide, although they do not elect me, but I've spent time to understand what their concerns are, what they'd like to see, and for them to understand what my point of view is. That's the respect I afford people. And it's really important to be able to note that I've been schlepping North Adelaide, but I'll be actively campaigning in North Adelaide, Lord Mayor, for me to understand and for people to understand in North Adelaide what the impact of one councillor is on that whole of the city. We are spending hours after hours after hours in this chamber, and you watch the vote on this, Lord Mayor, I can predict it. Everyone is going to support this except Councillor Martin. Everyone. We're spending on this item 40 minutes because what he's trying to put through, we have already supported. He supports a minority of you. That's what he supports. And I respect that because people with no voice deserve a voice. That's why this development has been reduced from 17 stories all the way down to eight because we listened to the people that didn't want to see a 17 story development on that site. We've listened to Councillor Wilkinson, which I would say has been fighting for that site ever since he's been elected on what he would like to see on it. And if he supports, if he supports this, if he's convinced, I'm convinced, that's one part, okay? But the other part that's really important in all of this is we have listened to the community. We have had public consultations. We have engaged. The results that's come back, 151 people participated in this survey. Okay, the two contentious issues were very clear. The one big issue was height. That issue, the response on that, if you take the 40% out of the people that had a problem with it, we are talking about a very small sample. There are more than 7,000 ratepayers in North Adelaide, Lord Mayor. And we talk about divestment, the gallery fills. Where are the people of North Adelaide today? Where is the gallery? Where is the protest vote? Where are people writing to us? Not one person has written to me from North Adelaide asking, asking me to vote for four stories. Not one. Where do these people live? In Councillor Martin's house? Where are they? I have not met one person on Main Street or Connell Street that wants to see more, less than eight stories. Not one. I have spoken to the businesses. I have engaged with them. And I was telling them, do you know the North Ward councillor wants to see four stories? Do you know that? No, we don't. No, we don't. He is not doing a good job. He is not representing his community well. Time, councillor. So, members, before I put this, oh. councillor Clarahan, you'd like to speak to this matter? The floor is yours. I, I'm able to speak, I think, but I won't be voting. Yeah. Um, and what I wanted to say is that, um, yes, I was involved in uh, the La Cornu issue many years ago. Uh, I was, in fact, the spokesperson for the North Adelaide Residents Group, and we were opposing uh, part of... <laughs> Councillor Martin has just flashed in front of me one of the flyers that I sent out 30 years ago. I remember I went door knocking 
uh, at 11 a.m. in the morning and I got home at 1 a.m. the next morning um, because people were genuinely concerned about the future development of that site and they weren't happy about a section of the proposal that overlooked all the little cottages. It was a four level, three and a half, four level open lot car park. And uh, I sought advice from various architects and they thought that was pretty horrible too. So uh, we were, we became active Lord Mayor and, uh, and there was incredible support garnered um, including businesses in the precinct against the particular proposal. And then along came a next developer and he actually, and I will probably need a little bit extra time, and he asked us if we would actually let him give him some feedback on his proposal to build cinemas. So I said, well, look, this is my opinion, but how about I get you to my house and we'll organise a meeting of people around the area. So he came and he spoke to about 40 people in my back room and presented his ideas for the cinema and shopping centre, etc. And nearly everybody said, what a great idea. We totally support your proposal. It's sensitive to the area. It's not over height. You're very thoughtful in terms of your traffic control. Uh, I think he took on board two minor suggestions and then got unanimous support. But one of our local developers, a Mr Theo Maris, actually challenged that decision in the ERD court because I think it was a metre and a half over height and at two levels and uh, and he felt there wasn't enough car parking and then the developer got sick and pulled out and then sold it to Macris. And here we are today uh, still dealing with it. But I have to say that the decision of this council uh, to purchase the site, and I thank Councillor Milani for leading that, um, has been an absolute turnaround of thir nearly 30 years of inactivity and also at the same time um, concern about what the next proposal uh, might look like and whether it would reflect and respect the village atmosphere and the heritage character of North Adelaide. And I didn't participate in the session that you had uh, when you were developing the, uh, the design guidelines. Uh, however, um, I was very interested in the consultation that occurred and I attended every single consultation session and I moved around the room and could I have a little bit extra on this occasion? One minute, Councillor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And uh, I did listen to what people had to say and I, th I was so impressed by the feedback. I thought it was so incredibly thoughtful and sensible and productive in terms of future outcomes. I've also read the details of the feedback from your Say Adelaide, and I see that the design guidelines for six and eight are the most contentious. I see that, for example, and in particular, guideline six, which talks about um, built form. And I've looked at the, um, at the feedback, the most recent, and I take into consideration the earlier, and yes, people are most concerned about whether that will ruin the village atmosphere and the heritage context of the, of the suburb of North Adelaide. And I feel for them. But I am further, uh, I'm, I'm further perhaps comforted by the presence of Councillor Wilkinson in terms of his design input. And I do wish everyone well uh, in, in producing an outcome that will be a legacy for this council and for the next council. And I do hope Time uh, that we, and I do hope that it will be a very fine legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Lani. Lord Mayor, sorry to confuse everyone. I'm withdrawing my conflict of interest. I've had a look. I'm not as close as Councillor Clarahan, and I'm very comfortable that um, I don't have a conflict of interest. Um, and these are the guiding principles, um, and I think they're, they're very balanced. So I'm going to speak and I'm going to vote. Um, this also might be the last chance I get to speak on this matter, and I think you've summed it up nicely, Councillor Clarehan. I don't want to repeat it, but I want to thank the elected members for all their input um, into developing these guiding principles. Um, Councillor Wilkinson, um, you've um, you know you've actually had a big you know um, impact on this. Um, the staff as well. The the con a consultation that's taken place has been thorough. Um, it, was, it was extremely professional, and as you said, Councillor Clarahan, 
um, the input that was received from the community was was absolutely wonderful. So I wish everyone well with these principles. I think the most important thing is just everyone just um, you can have your opinion on on height. These are guiding <coughs> principles. Let's take it to market. The EOI process is really significant, and the next council will make a decision on what actually happens on on that site. These are guiding principles to guide that next step of the process. Let it go forth and 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 follow that process with um, integrity and wholeheartedness. And um, I think actually everyone will vote well. From um, you know, let's see what the market has to bring back to the table. Um, and I know that there's some excitement out there. Thank you, Councillor. Before I hand you back to the mover, which is Councillor Slama members, I would also say that we've probably got 24 good million reasons to thank our ratepayers and 10 million good reasons to thank the taxpayers of South Australia, because this was a partnership between the City Council and the State Government, and it was leadership by Councillor Milani and the Council team. It is a wonderful legacy for this Council to break that deadlock after 29 years of market failure and inactivity. I think this is a momentous occasion. Good on you. Councillor Slavin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, that was my sum up, both yours and yours, so um, do appreciate that. Um, it's, it's only a few months ago that there was, there was a building on there. We're here. We can adopt those principles tonight, go to stage one, EOI. I think it's a job well done, all councillors. As uh, disagreeing as the North Adelaide crew may sound, I, as Councillor Aviad from Centre of Adelaide, like to see things happen and make sure that the portion of money that we spend on this goes to good use. And the quicker we can get it built, the quicker we can get things done and people in there, the quicker we can divest from those uh, fossil fuel banks that are funding you. Thank you. <laughs> Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Motion is carried. Division called. Kylie? Deserves a clap. All those members in favour, please rise. Councillor Milani, Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Hender, Councillor Slana, Councillor Corporal Moore, Councillor Moran. Okay, members, thank you. Motion carried. Now, members, I'm going to adjust the order of our proceedings. I've got three matters which I'd like to move through fairly quickly. The first is item 8.4, please, members. This is the legislated bylaw review, which is page 119 on your papers. Now, members, this is relatively procedural, but nonetheless extremely important. Now, you've got a recommendation to note, to make, to authorise and adopt. Now, the word there to make is that, in fact, you are making law. So, uh, members, you've got that recommendation before you. Uh, could I put this in your hands? Do I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Martin. As printed, do I have a second to Councillor Maloney? Councillor Martin, do you wish to debate? I know, Lord Mayor. Uh, just a note um, uh, and to congratulate the administration on moving to rule out um, uh, e-cigarettes and vapes in Rundle Mall. Um, that is a very substantial initiative and uh, runs well ahead of uh, government policy. And I know many people will be pleased to see that vapes and e-cigarettes are no longer um, kosher in Rundle Mall. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Malani. Uh, is that my right, OK, members, any queries, questions, queries or debate? I don't. Councillor Milani? No. Councillor Martin? No, no. Members, I put this item before you. 8.4. Those in favour? Those against? We carry 8.4. Now, members, I've got two motions on notice because I've got two councillors who are time pressured this evening. And I will put the first matter before you which is item 11.5, which is a motion on notice from Councillor Antic, Piri Street, Zebra Crossing, crossing to page 256 of your papers. Councillor Antic. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move as printed. We look for a seconder. Thank you. Councillor Moran, Councillor Antic, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is uh, relatively straightforward, I have to say. Um, you will uh, be uh, under no um, false illusions that there is out in front of our, our uh, Building a zebra crossing on Piri Street, Lord Mayor, which goes back to 2013, uh, with I think a year, uh, 12 months into the uh, failed, in my view, smart move policy, uh, which has uh, seen numerous bottlenecks of traffic around the uh, 
around the city. Uh, this is, of course, one of them. Um, Lord Mayor, um, what, uh, what the, um, that zebra crossing actually does to the traffic is provide a continuous curtain of uh, pedestrian traffic, which you might say, what's the problem? That's, that's terrific. Um, the, the reality of it is that uh, the car traffic on that street banks up routinely back up to Gawler Place and beyond multiple occasions in the day. It's a source of extraordinary complaint by people who use our city, and we are, of course, a capital city, and uh, we are subject, I believe, to the City of Adelaide Act, as we keep getting pointed out, uh, when it's convenient. Um, uh, but, uh, Lord Mayor, the, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, we, we, you know, we see in our commentary here that the um, uh, an investigation was conducted in April 2017, and that was actually, I think, as a result of questions I raised back then about it, uh, noted an infre in infrequent impact on the traffic flow. Now, I mean, what? You know, that, that's extraordinary. I mean, this, this is the only street in, this, in the main part of the CBD, as I understand it, with a zebra crossing. It's also the only street in the main part of the CBD which blocks traffic up like a bottleneck, like it does. Um, I mean, it is just a street that people avoid. Uh, in their cars. Uh, I accept um, that there is always a, a call for foot traffic, but there is also a set of traffic lights very shortly down the road. Can't be more than 25, 30 metres down the road. It's quite reasonable to people to use that like they do in every other street in the city. So um, I, these, clearly this zebra crossing, in my view, has not worked. We are a city that is still going to be relied on car traffic, whether people like it or not, uh, whether that's electric or you know whatever, hydrogen or fairy dust or whatever it is, um, it, you know, it, it will simply be a car that needs its traffic flow. So they, they, these zebra crossings are fine. In fact, I think there's one down on uh, on Wright Street or Guildford Street, or near the, which is oh, a Wombat crossing or a zebra crossing, works really well down there because there isn't this sort of continuous traffic flow. They don't work well in the CPD, regardless of what we're being told here. So uh, it's my view it needs to be completely removed and uh, I seek support. So, members, you're debating a motion moved by Councillor Randick, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to it? I'm happy to uh, wait to hear what the amendment is. You're reserving your right? Yeah. I then have Councillor Corbell Moore, and then I'm going to Councillor Aviad. Councillor Corbell Moore. Well, actually, no, no, if Councillor Aviad's not leaving straight now, I'll just wait for You can do that. Okay, look, I don't want this motion um, to get caught up in ideology about cars, pedestrians, bikes. Yada yada. I mean, this council's um, pretty gone a long way in in uh, those areas. Um, I think I walk across this zebra crossing almost every day. There's a councillor um, antic is quite right. There is a continuous stream of foot traffic. Now, I seconded the motion that put put it in. I think I certainly um, we've supported it a long time before it actually went in, and it was our first zebra crossing. Uh, and zebra crossings or wombat crossings are a welcome um, addition to certain streets, but this isn't the right one anymore. It's too close to the intersection on King William Street, um, and therefore you do get the bank up because there literally is, because it's in the pedestrian walkway, there really is somebody stepping out onto it, you know, the whole time. Um, and I've noticed now that um, motorists getting a little bit testy too and, um, and creating what could become a dangerous situation. Um, I think if um, you wanted to have a crossing there to link our um, streets, perhaps a signalised crossing would be better. But um, as I said, this isn't a vote against zebra crossing or pedestrianisation or bikes or anything like this. It is just saying that this zebra crossing, we gave it a good try, it was our first one, nobody's been killed, but it, because of Grenfell Street coming more uh, congested with the uh, bus lanes, um, period, the other side, the streets either side, well, the street one side, has um, had more traffic going down it. So um, I hope you support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Now, Councillor Aviad, I'll now go to yourself. Uh, sorry, my mistake. I'm going to go to Councillor Corbell Moore, then Councillor Aviad, then Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I won't be supporting this motion. That's probably no surprise. I do believe that uh, we need to make our city more accessible for people um, who are walking the streets, our pedestrians. And I see this as a safe pedestrian walkway which connects um, Victoria Square through to North Terrace. And it's highly frequented. It's one of the few points in the city where people can seamlessly walk across um, 
through precincts in our city and I just can't see the sense in ripping it up. We've invested all this money not too long ago. I'm sure the lifespan of this asset which we've invested in on a previous council has many years to come. And in fact, it's part of our smart move strategy to ensure that we increase the number of points in the city where pedestrians can safely cross the road. And we have done some work on the frequency of cars which are missing out on being able to go through the green light. And apparently between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. there were only 10, 2.5% recorded instances of actual lost green time, an average of eight seconds. And that was from Tuesday the 4th of April 2017 um, with 368 signal changes. That information wasn't provided in the administration comment, but it was because I asked some questions of the administration um, offline and I did want to seek some more information. And in fact, I asked around the number of complaints that our council have received through to the customer service centre about the zebra crossing, because that, that could be quite telling. If we're receiving high volumes of complaints over the years about the zebra crossing, people should be up in arms about it and we would be hearing about it from the community. I can't say that I've had a single person contact me about the zebra crossing. You're a South Ward councillor. Oh, yes, regardless of the fact that I'm a South Ward councillor, often, we often get bombarded of issues that affect the city across the board. And this is one instance where I haven't had a single person contact me at all, not in relation to the media that, that it's generated as a result of this motion going up, and not previously. In fact, I, I often hear comments about how people, my ward, Residents and businesses want our city to be more accessible and easy for people to get, get around on foot. Um, so I do think this would be a very backward step if we invested in ripping up this piece of infrastructure. I won't support it. I, I absolutely oppose it, most strongly. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Rabiad, followed by Councillor Wilkins and Councillor Hender. Councillor Rabiad. I've got a question, Lord Mayor, if that's okay. I, I also don't support um, the motion as it supports, but just look, just obviously we all frequent the area. Um, I just want to understand a little bit about um, do we have any statistics around any near misses, any issues to do with safety, because if there's any opportunities to improve the safety uh, and to put, for, to put the pedestrian first in that area by providing better lighting, by anything. Um, I'll be really interested to see how that pans out, but uh, I've seen some near misses uh, on that uh, on that intersection, uh, on that pedestrian crossing, and like I said, I'd just be interested if there's been any reported incidences with regards to safety of pedestrians, because I've just seen people jump and cars sometimes don't notice in time, and, and it, it is a problem, so. Uh, Acting CEO. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, thank you. We have no reported incidents of near misses, Councillor. Great, great. Well, look, just potentially, if there's any ways to improve, um, just to take it on board, um, even if there's potentially 20 metres or 10 metres before, that it may explain to people that they're nearing a pedestrian crossing because I've just seen cars break. Um, and thank God there hasn't been any um, any injuries, but um, it, is, it could potentially be a, a risk for us to manage. So if that could be taken on board, that'd be great. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilkinson, followed by Councillor Hendon. Uh, yes, no, since this came to my attention, I've been observing uh, the situation there and looking and seeing if cars sort of missed, missed lights. And my observation has been that generally uh, cars might be waiting for pedestrians to cross, but were they able to cross where they're not pedestrians, all they'll be doing is going up a few metres and waiting at the red lights anyway, so they're not actually missing out. I generally go up Grenfell Street and I would be more supportive of us getting rid of the bus lanes on Grenfell Street. I think that would help flow of traffic uh, more, than, more than this. I don't think this would really help. I remember when we did it, Dipti required, because it was the first one and they were being overly cautious, this extraordinarily wide um, uh, width of thing. If you look at the Abbey Road album cover that my daughter's named after, that it's ever crossing is nothing like as wide as this one, given the low speed environment that this is. I think it's probably twice as wide as it needs to be, it doesn't, um, and it could be narrower given the low speed environment. But I don't think cars are really missing missing the uh, missing the lights, uh, particularly because of it. Um, I just think we could just reduce the width of it a bit. But it, it works because it's not a signalised crossing where people push the button and then it holds up the traffic. 
after they've already crossed. You know, that the cars can immediately move through as soon as the person has passed. I actually think it works quite well. I was disappointed to see that the diagonal crossing that I was instrumental in having put in to, to Victoria Square has been removed. They used to be able to go straight to Victoria Square with one sequence. That's just been removed in the last month. So now you've got to go over the road, wait for the light, and then go again. And I think that's retrograde, so I'm not quite sure what's transpired there. But we are trying to make the city more pedestrian friendly whilst not needlessly holding up the traffic. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hendon. I also don't support this uh, motion and I don't think that'll come as any surprise to Councillor Antic. I've been a councillor in the, in the sector ward for eight years. No one's ever mentioned it to me as being a problem. It's my uh, neck of the woods and it's not an issue. And I am always on a bike. I'm also often on foot. But for the last six months, because of a project I've been doing, I've been driving from that side of the city across to my side of the city regularly. And I've often taken this road. It's never been an issue for me either. So I, I have experienced it as a as a uh, um, car driver as well. And it's not been a problem in that in that sense. There are two places in the city where pedestrians get right of way across streets. Two places in Adelaide. Um, and that this one and the one down in Gilbert Street, I think we should be celebrating them. In fact, I think we should be including a lot more pedestrian crossings in our city streets. I notice when I visit other cities where pedestrian crossings are regular occurrences, there's a completely different relationship between cars and pedestrians. People know to stop. People have a sense of the fact that pedestrians have rights when they're crossing roads too. And I would love us to adopt pedestrian crossings of this nature all over our city to change that dynamic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I look forward to this staying right where it is and, and I'd encourage the next council to do whatever they can to increase the, the use of zebra crossings and increase the rights of pedestrians on city streets. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mulaney, followed by Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Mulaney. Oh, just quickly, Lord Mayor, just put my hand up then to say I fully endorse what you said and I won't support the motion. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. As a regular user of that pedestrian crossing, I am amazed at how well um, pedestrians and cars are able to talk to each other. And I've never, ever seen a close encounter uh, of um, unsafe in an unsafe way um, and I am just amazed at how many people use that crossing and I'd have to say that there would be a huge number of people from uh, our adjoining council administration building who would use it I don't know how many times a day and that crossing works wonderfully well and as has already been mentioned, uh, when you drive down Piri Street, if you give way to pedestrians at that zebra crossing, there is no loss or gain. I mean, it is cars are held up on that intersection uh, with King William Street and it doesn't slow people down. It is wonderful to see pedestrians and cars being able to coexist together without any drama whatsoever. And I would be devastated to see that crossing removed. And I'm with Councillor Hender, we need more of them. So I won't be supporting this motion. Members, thank you for your debate. Members, can I encourage you please not to necessarily just reiterate each other's comments in the interest of time. We have a very long agenda this evening, otherwise I'll just be asking those to speak against matters. It will save us a lot of time. So your comments are well founded nonetheless. I disagree with this motion. Councillor Antic, you're summing up. Oh, well, it's an opportunity to uh, enter into this great big echo chamber that is um, um, bouncing around. That's good if people occasionally. Uh, around the table went out and spoke to people who actually do use the roads uh, rather than sit around and congratulate each other about you know, how, how, how well we use the roads, we're all pedestrians and the rest of us don't care, we just want to see pedestrians bowled over, you know, where all we really want is to see the traffic run properly down that street. But anyway, there are plenty of opportunities. Uh, clearly, um, you know, we have done what we do here and that is congratulated ourselves and well done to everyone. Congratulations. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I uh, yeah, it's just hard to know what to say to that. If anyone who anyone who anyone who well, I might as well. I've got two, I've got two minutes. I've got two minutes. Might as well use them up. Um, 
Might as well uh, use them up, I reckon. Um, but uh, the uh, the opportunity for people is there to go and see the very clear traffic bank up down Berry Street, and anyone who thinks that that's not the case is delusional. So, in any event, uh, let's put the motion and see what happens. Members, we will do exactly that. I put this matter before you. Those in favour? No, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Members, those against? Oh. Motion fails. Thank you, members. Thank you, Councillor Attic. Okay. Now, members, in the interest of time, can I please keep this moving? Item 11.5, which is a motion on notice from Councillor Antic, my mistake, 11.8, motion on notice from Councillor Antic regarding the impact of large scale neighbouring developments, page 262. No, Councillor. That's my motion. My mistake. Why aren't we starting with one? No, I'm not, uh, because we've got councillors who need to leave the chamber yeah, shortly, Councillor Brown. Councillor Aviard, item 11.8, impact on large scale. I, I apologise, I've, I've got to be it. at the airport for an international flight, so that's yeah, my apologies. What's your excuse? I apologise. So uh, I'm only away for a week to see my 93 year old grandma. Um, so, yeah, Ms. Blair, please. Um, I moved the motion in my name. I'm happy to read it and seek a seconder. Um, Councillor Wilkinson seconding. Um, Lord Mayor, I'll be very brief. Um, we're, all, um, we're all sort of expected through the changes of the DPA and planning that there'll be impacts on the community. Uh, and we all realise that um, it's quite challenging for us what those impacts could look like until places get built um, and people are impacted as a result. Um, we all are pro-development to some degree that's sympathetic to our community, that takes the community with it, that doesn't disable business and disable residents uh, when they're trying to, uh, to live their everyday life. Uh, we've seen the event um, of a significant impact on one of our uh, very popular city destinations and businesses on Curry Street, the Ed Castle. Um, and that's sort of given rise, I've been dealing with that issue over the last three months. For us to understand as a council, what we can do in the way of service delivery and assistance to businesses and residents that are impacted by major developments. Uh, we've seen streets shut as a result it's impacted on their businesses and shut their business down. Uh, we've seen their landlords that are not, you know, not prepared to provide uh, rental incentives or rental discounts to support them. Um, and they've been, they're sort of coming to us for support and help, but we're sort of the last the last resort for some of those business and residents. Um, so it would really be good that the first step of the motion is for us to try to work out within council what we could do in the way of relief package, immediate assistance, things that we could do when we know a development, a development application is about to go up and a development application is approved for us straight away to engage with the businesses around them and, and try to brace them. And we're talking about big developments here and potentially also speaking to the state government. Uh, in making sure that some of the developments that are being approved over $10 million, uh, that there is some type of support or a sink fund through that approval. Uh, so if there is, for whatever reason, an impact on a business or a resident, at least there's some support mechanism there uh, for them to be able to uh, reach into and, and get the support they need. So it's a pretty straightforward motion. I'm going to leave it here and I uh, look forward to some feedback from administration in due time on this. Thank you, Councillor Aviad. Councillor Wilkinson, you second the motion. Uh, yes, yeah, no, I've, I've experienced this through constituents in the city. Uh, I remember when the apartment building was going up next to Bayoletti Sports in Grote Street, they, they had a 30% loss in trade and they, and they just caught that. And they didn't ask for that apartment building next door to them, but because all of the tradesmen working on the apartment building basically parked out all of their customers shopping, they lost 30% of the trade for, for no dispensation. Fundamentally unfair. And I think you know maybe the government should look at sinking funds where you know if, if someone's going to make profit out of taking advantage of the capital city DPA, then maybe they some of that ought to go into offsetting the uh, impacted businesses. The Edinburgh Castle there was left with no loading zone. Like my initiative with the uh, Calvary Hospital about providing temporary parking to enable them to develop that in a different way. I think we should be looking at lateral ways, and even having parking on the roads and something like that to provide additional parking just for the period of the construction, just so that the adjacent businesses don't suffer um, whilst, whilst people are building these uh, multi-storey buildings which we're encouraging in the city. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Priscilla Cordelmore. Uh, look, I was at the Lord Mayor's um, 
precinct resident group, resident group forum last week, and this was raised by community representatives um, of both the resident groups in the South Ward as an issue, the catalyst sites and how they're handling um, issues as a result of, um, and their grievances. We are seeing a number of buildings pop up or have popped up around the city over the years, um, which are often put next to um, single storey or even double storey buildings, not sympathetic to their surroundings. And whilst I'm not necessarily against development, I do think we, we need to be able to have some mechanisms in place for residents and businesses to redress some of these developments. Um, the administration comment refers to um, traffic and traffic management of the buildings. And I have observed myself whilst driving on the streets um, of Adelaide that there are a number of um, buildings which have gone up. One is Vision on Morford and the other one's the Bohem Apartments on Whitmore Square, where residents are making right-hand turns in inappropriate places. And that's causing issues because then cars are, it's, an, it's not a spot where they can make a turn. And cars are, they're abruptly stopping and making that right-hand turn onto oncoming traffic and causing implications for the drivers behind them, which is a real issue on Whitmore Square because the flow around the square um, needs to be free flowing and we're seeing um, a number of cars starting to bank up and it's because of vehicles making right hand turns. Um, so I do think this is a really important motion and I hope that working with the new state government we can see what could be done. Thank you Councillor Corbyn Moore. Members no further debate I'm taking you back to the mover. Councillor Abia. Members I put this matter before you those in favour those against motion carried. I apologise, Lord Mayor and councillors, for me having to go. Safe travels, councillor. Councillor Antic. Now, members, we have external consultants with us. Councillor Moran, you are standing for. I'm standing for my motion. I'm just standing at the beginning of the motion. No, I'm not, Councillor Moran. I'm going to deal with the two confidential items because we've had con external consultants waiting for some time. So, I've got two matters. And I need this for quorum, Councillor Moran. <laughs> Members, item 13.1, which is an exclusion to the public. Now, the first item here, thank you, Councillor Moran, which is the Adelaide City Council Audit Committee. I need a motion from the floor to move that matter into confidence. Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Slama. I'm going to put this straight before you, Members. Those in favour, those against. Carried. The second one, Councillor. Councillor Moran, you are moving item 14.2.1, strategic property matter, into confidence. I need a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Slama. Members? Councillor. Yes, I'd like to propose an amendment, Lord Mayor. Just excuse me. No, an amendment to a confidentiality order is possible. And I'm proposing that uh, Council considers there's no merit in the argument that the matter is commercial in confidence. Councillor, you, can I assist you? You're moving a direct negative. So effectively, what is being proposed here is a motion to move a matter into confidence. What are you proposing to do? I, I am proposing the matter is heard in public. You can, Councillor, you can argue your case and vote against it. Well, that's, what, that's, that's the, uh, uh, the governance mechanism you have before you. Uh, Lord Mayor, I, I was under the impression that I am able to argue that the matter is heard in public. Yes, you can, but you can't move, you can't move a direct negative. It'd be the ultra virus. So can I get procedural okay. advice about this, please, members? No, don't move. Acting CEO. We, we know, we know. Um, really manage government comment? No, no, we don't need that. Where? Yeah, so my advice is, if you don't agree with it, argue against it. Okay. Through the law, Mayor, that's correct. That would be a direct negative. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I was going to argue that the matter is heard in public either tonight or on another occasion. Um, and I will simply uh, uh, speak to it then. Uh, to well, say I'm that. I'm of the motion, so I will um, want to speak to my motion. Hey. <laughs> Councillor Moran, you did move the motion, and I will extend you the courtesy, and I know that your fellow elected member, Councillor Martin, will be patient. Thank you, Councillor Moran, you moved the motion, and the second was Councillor Slummer. Remember, you are debating. Right. Um, uh, this is commercially in confidence, and once again, 
uh, the aforementioned is using this to make himself look as though he's against uh, keeping things brushed on. This is this is a, a, a top notch, not even in the grey area of commercially incompetence. This is right up there. And just so you don't take my word for it, uh, Councillor Martin, could I ask the administration to explain the high order of confidentiality needed on this? So we do not put ratepayers' money that we've invested for them at risk. Acting CEO Beth Davidson Park. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Steve Matheson, could you make a comment, please? Thank you, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the item tonight that you're considering, there's definitely an opportunity um, that if this was heard in public, it could actually compromise the process that we're proposing at the moment. There's a number of disclosures within the report that could also actually potentially disadvantage council from a commercial basis. Um, and there's also the mention of a couple of parties, um, two parties in the report that need to remain confidential as well. They haven't previously been released from confidence and they'll need to go forward. Thank you, Director. Councillor Moran. So, Councillor Slama, you seconded. Councillor Martin, you have to speak to the matter now. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I, I fail to understand that the administration believes that this should be heard in confidence because the matter that's under discussion is about moving to a public process. That is to say, there will be an advertising program that follows the agreement to this matter here. Um, how, how it's necessary for us to have uh, uh, that in uh, confidence or why it's necessary to have that in confidence when the matter is going to be in the public arena one expects in the next week or so is beyond me. Uh, more, moreover, there is no commercial party mentioned in the document. It is simply the actions and decisions of the City of Adelaide. Now, it is politically sensitive, I understand that, but that's no reason it, uh, for withholding the matter from public debate. And so I, I will be voting against the matter being heard in private. There are no financial sums discussed in there at all. Councillor Moran is wrong. There's just no money that I can see in there. And indeed, all of the, the money uh, associated with this matter is already in the public arena. It was disclosed publicly. So I, I cannot understand other than the political sensitivity of the matter, why it's being heard in confidence. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Milani. Do you want me to sum up? Could I agree? No, I've uh, oh, got Councillor Wilkinson to put his hand up. Councillor Wilkinson, do you wish to speak? Uh, look, I've taken the um, one that's brought out into the public and I'm looking through the report that I've seen. I, I've not seen the figures that are, uh, need to be here. Keeping confidence, so I'll, I'll be voting against the gain of confidence. Okay, so members. Thank you. In absence of any further debate, Councillor Rand, you're summing up on a motion to move into confidence. Look, I don't understand why um, why these two councillors are saying that. It's clearly confidential. Our administrative staff have said it's confidential. There are parties named in there who haven't given their permission permission for their um, names to be used. It will be coming out in two weeks, but not all of it. I mean, obviously, we want to keep a competitive. Um, advantage of our private talks on this for the public's sake. After all, we are. This is not our money, um, and we want to get a good deal. And that deal is enunciated in here. So I urge you to vote for it to be kept in confidence. Members, I put 14.2.1 before you. Those in favour. Those against. Item carries. So, members, um, this chamber is now in confidence. Can I please ask all parties in the gallery who are not directly associated with the matters which will soon be debated to kindly leave the chamber. We thank you for your attendance and I will reopen this chamber for public as soon as these two matters have been dealt with.
Okay, so we are re now re-recording. Members, I will keep this meeting moving. And I will resume members at item eight on your agendas. Now, members, we have dealt with various matters as we go, but I've got item 8.1 and 8.2. 8.1 is outcomes of the Singapore and Penang visit. 8.2 is visitor economy action plan. Now, does any member want to draw any of those items out? Because I'll unblock both of those. I'm doing a call over. So, members, do you want to? Does anyone want to debate 8.1 or 8.2? Otherwise, I'm going to move and take on both. You've got a question, Councillor Martin? Two, okay. Sorry? Two. You've got two questions? Yeah. Regarding which item? Um, 8.2. Uh, 8.1, sorry. I'll move it, or move it. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Lord Mayor, I wanted to just make a comment about 8.2. All right, members, I'm going to then do this separately. I, you are moving 8.1, Councillor Blaney. Second it for 8.1. Is there any debate about 8.1? I don't think there would be. Questions. There is a question 8.1. Yes. Okay. Councillor Martin, 8.1, your question is. Okay. Um, uh, Councillor Moran asks, why didn't I ask it before the meeting? Yeah. And the reason is that the Lord Mayor wasn't attending the meeting where it could have been asked. Um, Lord Mayor, in the advertising yesterday, you said you expected there would be substantial overseas interest in 88 O'Connell Street from uh, uh, for the uh, development. Now, given that you met in Singapore on July 9th, the principal for Maple Tree Investments, who recently made a substantial investment in the CBD, and then held a lunch on July 12th for property developers, including chairman and CEOs of the Chip Ng Seng Corporation, OUE Limited, and the Cashed Up Trust Capital Advisors, We Her Holdings Limited, and YTL Starhill Global. Have you had any conversations with any developers about 88 O'Connell Street? No. So, members, the reflection there was is that the Bruce Gosper, the High Commissioner for Australia in Singapore, very kindly hosted a function at the Australian, Australian High Com. There was a group of Singaporean investment groups, approximately 12, of which a number of those groups already have strategic holdings in the city of Adelaide. One of those groups only recently had bought the E and Y building, the EY building directly across the road from Town Hall. We produced a investment prospectus, which was really a document which is designed to promote the city of Adelaide as a as an investment and tourist destination. Um, we, from the words from the people in that room at that lunch, the appetite for investment in Adelaide has probably increased some three to five hundred percent over the last two to three years. Um, so we have great confidence that when the 88 O'Connell Street project goes out to EOI, that there will be not only local interest, not only national interest, but also international interest. And also 4.4.3 uh, notes that the City of Adelaide and the University of Adelaide will now work to create a smart city competency centre. What is that? I refer that matter please to our Director Ian Hill. Um, through you, Lord Mayor. We're just in some very early discussions with Adelaide Uni around uh, potential collaboration around smart city initiatives. Uh, they're looking at setting up a bigger footprint. They're looking at the old ORAF site and they're talking to us around what we may or may not do with our smart city studio. So some very early preliminary discussions around what that could start to look like. Okay, and just one final question. It seemed from the, uh, the round table investment lunch that there were either four or five people from the City of Adelaide who went to Singapore. Is that correct, Lord Mayor? Is it four or five? Director Hill, um, I was the elected official representing the City of Adelaide. This is myself as uh, the Director of Growth and uh, Craig as the Manager of Invest Adelaide and Ben Saint was also. Uh, four in total. So four in total, including the Lord Mayor. And the Lady Mayor is Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate on that matter 
I don't. So I'll put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you very much. So members, 8.2. I'll need a mover for 8.2, Visitor Economy Action Plan, moved by Councillor Clarahan, seconded by Councillor Moran. Any questions, queries or debate? Councillor Clarahan. Yes, um, Lord Mayor, I just had a question. Um, has the uh, Tourism Action Plan morphed into the Visitor Economy Action Plan? Good question. Uh, yes, we're we using the terminology the visitor economy. It's more broadly accepted both through the Commonwealth and State and South Australian Tourism Commission. So the notion of being the visitor economy rather than simply tourism, it's about the drivers of the visitor economy. So our support for things like the Adelaide Convention Bureau, our support for Study Adelaide, as well as the leisure-based driving of tourism. Yeah, I, I didn't have any issue around the drivers, um, but I just wondered why we called it the Visitor Economy Action Plan, when in fact the state government and federal government refer to their strategic plans as tourism plans. I'm happy to begin through the Lord Mayor. Um, that, that's changing quite a lot. A lot of the number of other states and territories are moving to the technology of visitor economy rather than just tourism. It's, it's pretty, uh, Australia certainly are. Uh, the Commonwealth certainly are so looking at reviewing the Tourism 2020 plan, so you're right, that's the existing national framework. But as they look to move to the 2030 plan, I think you'll see that terminology does move to visitor economy. Okay. And... Um... Sorry. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to um, to say, look, I, I think the plan's great, and it's good that we've got some KPIs there. Um, I do want, I do just want to make a comment about how this all began, and it began with a member of the public who worked for a bus company or a mini bus company or a chauffeur company who would pick um, overseas and interstate visitors up and drive them through the city to elsewhere. And he actually came to council and he spoke through our public forum about the need for more information about our city offerings and particular things that he could, he could actually communicate to interstate and overseas visitors as he was driving through the city. And from that came a motion, I think I put, that we develop a tourism action plan or a way of responding to some of these issues. And I wanted to acknowledge um, that I think it was Naomi Marsh um, from our administration who did a huge amount of the initial work. Um, but I do note in the back that it even has Deputy Lord Mayor Megan Hender as an acknowledged person. So I'm not sure how up to date it is, but um, I do see that a huge number of people have been involved in the preparation of this plan and I just wanted to acknowledge them all and thank them. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Uh, members, any further debate on that point too? Otherwise, I'm going to put this matter directly before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry 8.2. Members, you've dealt with 8.3, you've dealt with 8.4. I now take you to 8.5. I need to do this in a number of parts. Now, members, 8.5 is the 2018 LGFA, which is Local Government Finance Authority, annual general meeting. Councillor Clarahan, you would like to? Nominate you, Lord Mayor, because I'm given that I'm now president, I won't be able to um, be a proxy delegate or a delegate. And so given that you usually attend as our delegate, whether you would be interested in also okay, so accepting this role, and I'd be happy to nominate you. Thank you, Councillor. You're nominating the Lord Mayor as the appointment of a council representative of the 2018 LGFA Finance Authority, AGM. So I'll be the voting delegate for and on behalf of council. That's what yeah. you're doing? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll accept if nominated by the council. Is there any further nominees? Okay, so I'll put that before you, members. It's non-pecuniary, so I can stay. Uh, those in favour? I need a motion, actually. Thank you very much. Oh, Councillor Wilkins is moving a motion. Councillor Slava is seconding the motion. Now you'll vote, members. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Uh, the second stage is the, this is point two, members. Notes the call for nomination for local government authority, finance authority, board. 
and determines whether to put forward a nomination. Now, members, the process for this, as you would know, this would be asked of many council chambers across the state, and it would be the LGFA making the final decision about which nominees are accepted. Do I have any nominees within this council chamber? Councillor Hinder. Can I just ask a question? Yes, of course. And you can self-nominate should you wish. There's also, the timing an issue because we're about to go into an election and you know I know some of you may not actually be here so we might nominate someone who doesn't who's no longer around after the election um, and we're in the hands of the electors about that would it be better to wait until after the election and then nominate from the new chamber where we know they're going to be around for some time we'll find out if this is time sensitive because this might be playing out across all LGAs at the moment actually council um, Acting CEO. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, um, my understanding is that nominations close on the 26th of October. So that that. <laughs> Lord Mayor, I'm happy to move. We decline to nominate anyone for the board. Okay, so members, we have a motion because I don't have any nominees put their hands up. So we have a motion, unless I do. So there were no hands going up. Okay, so Councillor Maloney is moving that we're not putting forward a nomination. That's your right. Due, to do. Due, and due to the fact that we, um, the upcoming election. Councillor Clearing. There's no Is it possible that uh, we could even nominate a member of staff? I don't think so, no. No? No. Oh, I think I they're calling for elected members. Given that there are members of staff from other councils. Acting CEO, we're just going to clarify with that now. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a, a point of clarification. Nominations close on Friday, 17 August. The actual meeting is on the 20th. No, of October. So I just wanted to clarify that. And um, my understanding is that no, we can't nominate a staff member. Are you sure? No, we're talking about we can. We can. Okay. Are you interested? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would be if council didn't want to appoint an elected member. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be happy to nominate you. <laughs> okay, well, members, procedurally, I'm just going to check. Do I have any nominations from this council chamber? I don't. Councillor Clarehan, you would like to do what? I'd like to nominate um, Steve Mathewson. Steve Mathewson, do you accept if nominated? Well, I'm given permission by my CEO, Lord Mayor, absolutely. Okay, and that's a reasonable caveat. So, do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Corbell Moore. Yeah, now, now does Mr. Mathewson need to remain in the chamber or leave the chamber? Where does it say that? Oh, you're not voting, are you? Sorry, you're, 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 you're not a councillor. Okay, so members, we have a motion moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. I'll put this before you. Those in favour, those against, carried. Mr. Mathewson, you will be nominated, put forward by the council for the role of board member, subject to your CEO's advice. Thank you. Thank you, members. Thank you, Ben. Members, item three on the 8.5, notes the call for notice of motions. So members, do you have any motions you would like to be put forth at the LGFA AGM? Uh -huh. Sorry, AGM, correct. <coughs> no, Councillor Martin? Oh, absolutely, Lord Mayor. Oh. I was going to propose that the Local Government Finance Association consider um, a policy of divestment of fossil fuels um, in any investment matters it considers. I will look for a seconder. Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Martin, you wish to speak to your reasoning? No, I think um, we've already had the discussion. Um, I, unless somebody wants a report, do you want to report it to no, forming a motion or are you happy just to act? No, we're happy to let them consider as opposed yeah, to yeah. saying that's the way. Oh, okay. Okay, well, no, Lord Mayor, no one wants a report, so I'm happy for this to move forward. I will just look to my right if you captured the wording for this motion. You have. Okay, thank you. Any debate members? Can we have the words read to us, please? Uh, through the Chair, that the L LGFA consider a policy of divestment of fossil fuels in any <coughs> finance matter. 
That reflects your motion. Okay, members, I'm going to put this matter before you. Those in favour? Councillor Martin? Oh, just a slight variation, as suggested by the President of the LGA, uh, in Treasury matters, in Treasury and financial matters. In Treasury and financial matters. Do you like that read, read back in its entirety? That's what the Council has moved. Councillor, you're happy with the wording? I'm happy with the wording. Members, you know what you're voting on? Okay, can we read it out for the last time and then I'll call the vote? Through the Chair, that the LGFA consider a policy of divestment of fossil fuels in any Treasury and finance matter. That, that does not make sense. That does not make sense. That does not make sense. Treasury's going to divest themselves of fossil fuels. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lord Mayor, if if, if uh, the, the room wants <laughs> further clarity, then I'll I'll dictate the previous motion, and that way everyone will be happy. We didn't like that one. Well, as your presiding member, I would suggest that the intent is clear enough. So we just take the intent. So. I'm, I'm happy for the administration to wordsmith that so long as the intent remains the same. We'll take that as an instruction. Okay, so members, I'm putting this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? That item is carried. So that concludes members item 8.5 in totality. I take you to the last of the eights, which is 8.6, which is a um, recommendation to note. So, Councillor Clarehan, moving is printed. Councillor Moran, seconding? Yep. Any debate? Councillor Clarehan, summing up. Yep. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry 8.6. Emerging key risks, members, of which there are nil. So I'll take you to item 9.1, which is a question on notice from Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Corbell Moore's question was, where is the administration at in relation to meeting the objectives of reviewing speed limits in the city? as according to the Smart Move strategy. The answer is the 2017-18 Smart Move Interim Action Plan included funding to undertake a citywide speed limit review. This review was planned for completion by December 2018 and will be brought to Council in early 2019. Councillor Corley Merle, I hope that answers your question. So members, we have a balance of motions on Sorry, questions without notice. Do I have any members? I don't, so I'll take you to motions on notice. The first of which is Councillor Moran, 11, item 11.1, .1, which is page 245 of your papers regarding Highland Street. Councillor Moran. Uh, well, Lord Mayor, um, I, I fail to uh, realise that the next Capital City Committee uh, meeting is in the next council. So this, um, le this motion can't be moved because it can't. Okay. Councillor, there is a triple C meeting to be held in September. Oh, right, sorry, I was given, given uh, wrong information. Uh, <laughs> in that case, I move it as printed. And so you have a seconder with Councillor Corbell Moore. You wish to speak to it? Uh, well, look, um, the, the government's been recently looking at Harley Street and how um, it can. <coughs> sorry? All happy? All happy? Uh, yeah, it's summed up. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Members, I don't see any hands from across the floor, so I'm going to put this matter directly to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Councillor Moran, that was your quickest motion ever. <laughs> My super time. <laughs> so, members, item 11.3, Councillor Corbell Moore, motion I notice supporting people experiencing homelessness. Councillor Corbell Moore? Oh, My mistake, oh, members. Can I give some explanation? Yes, please. I would like to. I'm still waiting on somebody that wants to speak in public forum regarding this, and also I, I wanted to also speak to Councillor Hender yeah. about the words of the second part, and I didn't quite catch up. So uh, we have two more decision-making meetings. So I'll once again flip that to the next one. So you are withdrawing 11.2. Thank you very much, Councillor Moran. Councillor Corbell Moore, item 11.3. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I seek a seconder for the motion, assuming that it's been read, supporting... Seconded by Councillor Martin. Prime Minister, thank you. I know it has been a long night and I hope that you'll indulge me just for just a few moments while I talk to my motion um, and seek your support for endorsing it. 
homelessness is still an issue in the city of Adelaide and we do have a number of people sleeping rough each night. It's 148 um, people sleeping regularly. Um, and Adelaide City Council has signed up to the Adelaide Zero Project, which is supporting, which is also supporting everybody's home to advocate um, for addressing homelessness across the nation. And I think this, this motion is really seeking our administration to advocate for more that could be done. So we're already doing so much and our administration comment has outlined quite clearly and um, concisely just at who we've been supporting service providers and how much money we've been giving over this term of council and the facilities, um, the good initiatives, all the good work that this administration has been done, but there's still more work that needs to be done. The administration have highlighted a couple of points um, where we could be taking some action um, we could sign up to Everybody's Home campaign and that would be a first for a council in Australia. So I think that is one area where we could be advocating more. And I think that Adelaide City Council could um, take a strong stance on the need for accommodation services and provision of accommodation. That's one of the key things is that we need more accommodation for people that is affordable. Public housing and we need, we need assistance for people who are experiencing homelessness services in addition to reduced rent that I think um, I, I really would like your support on this and I don't want to speak for too long because we, we're already quite late and I, I can't see that you're particularly engaged people on their mobile phones and things like that. I suspect you're going to support it anyway. Um, so I'll open it up to the Chamber for debate. If you've got any questions or comments, I'm happy to address some of those in summing up. Your second letter is Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to this? Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, I will support this. Um, I, I, uh, I would have preferred that the motion referred to targeted federal and state government investment because, of course, uh, public housing and affordable housing in this state generally falls to the state government rather than the federal government. And indeed, in that area, the state government has been slowly relinquishing its housing stock, which is part of the broader problem within the community. So the state government, uh, and, and I'd ask the administration to take that on board, should be our, our first target. Um, but uh, I certainly endorse the, uh, the comments with regard to Adelaide Zero. Uh, it is, in my view, the real initiative that's occurred in uh, the area of public housing in South Australia and Adelaide uh, in almost a generation. It is an opportunity for us to become involved in a program that will bring real outcomes, provided at the back end there is that housing that's provided. It relies entirely on the availability of public housing so that people can be moved from street to homes and that continues not only for the first 40, 50, 60, but each and every month of every year. And that kind of commitment does require a great deal of government, uh, uh, state government funding. Um, moreover, um, I am uh, just delighted, as Councillor uh, Corbell Moore is, uh, that the council staff have worked as they have in this area over the last couple of years. I can honestly say that I am truly proud of what this council and our staff does in terms of dealing with homelessness and homeless uh, issues in the city. Um, and they are to be congratulated and I'm just delighted to hear that we are committed to exploring further uh, community gardening options as well. Um, it may seem like a minor thing, but for those who are involved, it becomes their world. Councillor, you could suggest to the mover for a variation to include the word state government should you wish, and the mover could say yes or no. Well, Lord Mayor, there, there is a comment in the administration comment which refers to the reason why that has been left out. Um, That's fine. That's right. Noted. Noted. Okay, thank you. Now I've got speakers. I have uh, Councillor Marty, did you wish to speak? You had your hand up earlier. No, Lord You don't? Councillor Wilkinson, followed by Councillor Hender. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yeah, no, I'm happy to support this and thank Councillor Corbell on this move, following on the move on Square Salvation Army. I think just point out that just at this very time, the Salvation Army Women's Citadel in Angus Street is being sold. It was purpose built for 
for uh, this sort of purpose. And that building is a four-storey heritage listed red brick building on Angus Street, south side, is, is currently on the market. So, you know, if, if government's serious about this issue, you know, terrific opportunity just to buy that building, which was purpose built in 1911 for this very purpose. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hendon. Just very quickly, I also support this um, initiative and um, thank Councillor Corbell for it. Um, and I particularly like the three uh, three things that she's identified for this reason, is that they are all initiatives that are designed to solve homelessness as opposed to support people who are homeless. And I, I um, again, it's for it's for the, um, for the new council, but um, it'd be interesting, I think, for us to make an assessment of where we put our resources um, uh, and whether we are facilitating and supporting homelessness, I understand you have to look after people who are homeless, or whether we're actually trying to in introduce initiatives that fix the problem. And if there is any way of us sort of moving at, from A to B um, in the next term of council, I think now's the time to do it. I've lived in the city for over 30 years. I've never seen homelessness, um, public homelessness, as bad as it is now. I've never seen the number of people living rough in very open um, circumstances on the street. It's distressing um, for them, it's distressing for us, and it is by, by um, the virtue of this report. It's, the numbers are small and so it really actually is solvable, but now's the time to solve it. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clearhand. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I absolutely support this motion. I have a question of the administration. There's mention of the, um, the, the campaign, um, Everybody's Home, which is advocating to the federal government to address the issue. Um, and I'm wondering whether we could include that as part of the motion, um, if, whether the person who's moving it um, if there's value in actually including it, that this council supports the Everybody's Home campaign and whether the mover would incorporate that into the motion. I'm happy to you happy to incorporate that into the motion? Um, I'm just wondering if administration have any issue with that. No? Okay. Okay, so I'll just so get comfort from the... Councillor Clarehan, I'll just get comfort from the seconder. Yes. Councillor Martin, general comfort from the floor. No objections? Okay, so we will vary that to include that wording. Yes. Thank you, Councillor. And, and I just wanted to say, Lord Mayor, that um, homelessness is such a, a complex issue and resourcing, in just resourcing alone um, to provide housing um, doesn't necessarily solve some of the issues because um, I've discovered um, by getting to know one of the homeless people in King... In, um, O'Connell Street, that this person um, actually has a home, but they just don't want to be there. They want to be in a more social um, environment of a main street. Um, I also um, would have to say I agree with um, Councillor Hender. We've got another person that's just moved into Archer Street. Well, they've been there for about four or five weeks now, and they're living in the um, under the veranda of a church. Um, and um, it's just becoming more and more conspicuous that there are more and more people who are experiencing um, issues around a safe and suitable home um, to live in. So I totally support um, Councillor Corbett Belmore for her motion. Thank you, Councillor. Any further comments? I hand you back to the mover. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't say too much more, just that uh, homelessness, we've seen the statistics from 2005 to 2011. We, there was a drop in, home, um, in rough sleepers in South Australia, 40.8%, and it's increased between 2011 and 2016, 48%. We've seen an increase in that, that number, and to me that's, that's so alarming, and it's one of the key reasons why we need to address it at the local government level, at all levels of government. Um, and Adelaide in South Australia, the city is the second council area where we see the highest number of um, homeless um, and rough sleepers. At that Port Adelaide infield, it's the highest area. And they have the highest number of rough sleepers. I think it's important that we show compassion and leadership and um, do everything that we can to address this issue and really, really take a strong stance on um, eliminating 
I must have said and translate this for good. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore. So, members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Thank you. So, members, we have three more motions on notice to deal with. We have actually dealt with all of the confidential items. So, there is light at the end of the council tunnel. Um, members, can I look to Councillor Corbell Moore again for item 11.4, Main Street Precinct Governance Models, page 255. Can I seek a seconder? Yeah. We're all seconded. <laughs> seconded by Councillor Moran. Thank you. Whilst you might be seconding it, this I do have the mic, so I will be saying just a few words. Um, I I moved this motion because Councillor Abbey had called the workshop, but I wanted to give some specific direction to the workshop that we can discuss in the right forum, which is for our administration to present some information to us to consider about governance models for the precinct associations around business improvement districts. And I've heard um, some really good things. In fact, I've got a book here by David West um, about business improvement districts, um, where he speaks very highly of the work that's been done in um, Canada and America, like Philadelphia, in um, the UK, in London, in Auckland, New Zealand, where it's been very, very successful. And there are many different models and variations of business improvement districts. I think it's important that this council considers that for the future of um, the city and our main streets. Thank you, Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Moran, you spoke, you seconded the matter? Uh, no, no, I totally agree with Councillor Corbell Moore. Members, any debate? <laughs> Councillor, no. Councillor Corbell Moore? No. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry the item. Now, members, you have dealt with item 11.5, so I take you to 11.6. Councillor Wilkinson, motion on notice, recycling stations, page 258. Councillor? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I have to thank my wife, Robin, actually, for the idea behind this. She lived in, in Italy and Europe and experienced these sort of facilities there many years ago. And it's really intended for people who want to do the right thing, having opportunity to put recyclable things that aren't able to go into the yellow bin. Councillor, I'll take a seconder, uh, then you can continue. continue. So Councillor Corbell Moore is your seconder. The floor is back to you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. More. Um, so, uh, polystyrene, meat trays and things like that, they cannot go into the, the yellow bin, but there are ways of recycling that. That's one example of the sort of thing. Light globes is another thing that cannot go into the yellow globe, yellow bin, but if provided uh, the, the opportunity uh, through this sort of facility, they can be recycled. But it's about council providing the common collection points could have one up near the central market in the car park there where people are going, where to park their car, convenient locations where they can do the right thing. Obviously the people who don't give a shit about, so excuse my French, um, about doing the right thing and they'll just put their uh, any other thing in, in, in whatever bin. But people who want to do the right thing, and lots of people in the city who do want to do the right thing, giving them the opportunity to do the right thing and council will help them in that initiative. We're already collecting batteries at the, at the community centre, that's a start, but this is just taking it a step further. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Corbell Moore, seconder. Can I encourage you to turn your microphone on, please? Indeed, I've moved it. Um, so I commend Councillor Wilkinson for that. And I do think there's a really good synergy between this motion and the one that I moved back in December 2016, which was titled um, Rubbish Bins in the Public Realm. Um, calling for a report to come back in February 2017 about options for recycling in the public realm and introducing new bins and 10 cent collections and all kinds of things. That's a really good question. Maybe you could ask the administration what happened to that motion and um, the implications of the directive there. So it's really, really important that with these motions that there's strong action that's taken. And in light of what's happened with China, I think it's all the more important now that we are really addressing recycling and elimination of waste and it's been driven by the community not just by what's happening in China so thank you for raising that. Thank you Councillor, Councillor Milani. Yeah it's interesting I, um, I think there's a, a conversation to be had and there's a nervousness I think about having it as to how much of our rubbish in yellow bin actually ends up in landfill it's a really high amount um, and talking to people in the industry 
Um, you know, I, I, we spend a fortune on recycling and the systems that go into it. And reality is, I don't think people, many people know that most of it ends up in land. A lot of it ends up in landfill. I think there's a piece of work and a conversation to be um, done and had, a, had about that, um, maybe for the future council. But it's something I've been talking to the administration about, and um, I think there is a, a, a bigger conversation and piece of research to do on that. Thank you, councillor. Members, any further debate? There is none. Back to the movement. You're the bit, my mistake. Of course you are. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, that removes a foot in discussion with Council Administration about labelling things and moving towards compostable uh, uh, packaging and stuff like that, which is all, all good, but that's all going to take time. This is something that we can do in the short term to help people do the right thing. So I'm done. Thank you, Councillor Members. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. So, members, item 11.7, motion on notice, Naked Streets, page 260 of your papers, Councillor Wilkins. Uh, yes, if you turn to that paper, position of the paper, there's a photo of me. Actually, no, there's not. Um, there's a photo of two streets. Uh, Councillor, I oh, look, need a seconder before we move anywhere. Uh, Councillor Hender is your seconder. The floor is Thank yours. You. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Um, the two photos in the uh, in the agenda show the contrast of what our, particularly our residential streets could look like um, under the naked streets approach where uh, in liaising with our council administration with the line marking in Stanley Street we've got a fantastic outcome and you can see from the photograph it's a beautiful looking street quiet residential street bereft of, uh, of, of sign marking and uh, it, it works a treat and the research um, emanated from the Netherlands in the first instance is that uh, uh, when you take away all of the, uh, uh, the lines and signs and things like that that people actually just behave in a more responsible sort of way and there's plenty of opportunity for us to rationalise our parking signage, have less yellow lines where it's obvious where you can't park anyway of opportunity and there's plenty of opportunity for us to uh, to uh, look at what's being done in other parts of the world and improve uh, the, the safety and look of our city. Thank you. Thank you. Second by Councillor Hender. I reserve my right. Members, do I have any debate? Councillor Slama. Well, Mayor, we move from uh, Bono Street with no names, we move to Wilco Street with no names. Um, I love it. I think the spirit of the law is, is exactly what we're, what we're talking about here. It doesn't have to be about strict lines and markings for bike lanes and confusing uh, uh, bits of markings on the road everywhere. So I think it's very good. Although I must add that I asked my son to Google um, naked streets last night and got it. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> he was still Googling it an hour later. <laughs> I think you need net natty. <laughs> um, councillors, any further debate? Councillor Corbellmore? I also wasn't sure quite what Naked Streets was. And I did a good research it though. Um, well, I just assumed that it was to do with like the line markings and I did ask a few questions and um, you know the, the administration comment is quite limited um, but it is really about decluttering the streets and removing obstacles which don't necessarily need to be there um, guardrails all kinds of things so i think there's some good work that's been done abroad and it'll be great for us to make this as a policy position for our council and for the next council can i ask a question of our acting ceo please and our team on this matter the um i would presume that should this matter get up and this report be brought back to council in due course, that there would be a full consideration of safety in terms of, um, uh, uh, I was listening on the radio today and they were talking about common sense and clearly common sense is always not always that common. Um, acting CEO, could we, could you comment on that please? Um, because if there was ever a, va a faint uh, 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 chance that safety would be compromised as a consequence of this, I could not support it. Uh, certainly, Lord Mayor, through you, um, safety is always a paramount concern of um, any traffic management issues that um, we're addressing. And as we've said in the report, there are some Australian standards 
in line marking and in signage, which we do comply with. Um, so Lord Mayor safety, absolutely. And um, we don't deviate from legislative requirements at any time. And um, I can assure you that um, that'll continue to be paramount in all the work that we do. And further, Acting CEO, the, uh, the, the motion as it stands talks of should only be implemented where absolutely required. How would you ever determine the definition of where absolutely required? Um, through you, Lord Mayor, we'll come back with more detail. The, um, we are talking here in particular, my understanding, around residential streets, quieter residential streets, and perhaps some of our parkland paths and areas. Um, so again, we have um, traffic regulations, line marking signage and regulations for different classes of streets. So that's the way we'll construct um, the uh, advice that we bring back to you. Well, I won't speak against this motion, uh, members, but I do not, well, I hope this doesn't turn into an expensive academic exercise which takes our administration into 500 hours of fruitless work. So. Members, do I have any further debate? I don't, so I'm going to go to Council Book and sort of sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the uh, uh, the line marking work that's been done in Stanley Street, the photograph in the uh, um, uh, in the agenda, shows um, what what extent line marking is required. But very little. So Childers Street, by contrast in the photograph, is not required land marking. It's line marking that we have elected to do. It actually costs money to maintain all that line marking. So by having less line marking, it actually saves money in the long run. And also the lines, um, speaking with the traffic engineer from Melbourne who contacted me, can be actually um, slip hazards for cyclists and motorbikes because the white painted lines are actually slippery for, for two wheel vehicles and um, bicycles. So um, having less lines like that is actually safer in that regard. And um, uh, the other finding has been that where there's very clearly delineated sort of lines and things like that, um, reflectors in the middle of the road, it take, the street takes on more of the appearance of a runway and actually makes people feel uh, more inclined to sort of gun it down the street because it actually has a presentation of a runway, whereas when you, when you take away all the line marking, people just take more care and the streets look better for it, as Stanley Street, I think, is a credit to our administration and what can be achieved. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? So the item carries. Now, members, I would, we have dealt with all matters. So, that's great. No further business. Motions without notice. Do I have any motions without notice? I don't. So I don't see any hands. I'm going to close this meeting. So, members, the time is 9.06 p.m. I will officially declare this meeting closed Tuesday the 14th of August 2018 and I will thank you for your contribution.